Hey guys. Uh, and can we're waiting on John. Okay. Um, when John arrives, um, we hopped on earlier today, so he's going to make me the host. Good. In order to manage all of this stuff, because it's not a, it's not a panelist, it's not a webinar like we normally do. Um, once we start, we'll hit the record button to make sure this whole thing's being recorded. Um, but that's where we stand right now. We get it. We verified some information earlier today with um, Julian. Okay. He may join us tonight as well. Okay. We'll see. Just so we make sure um, that there were no bylaw related issues or, or whatnot. Um, but that's where we stand. Um, Martin was out of town on, on traveling for business or whatever. Um, I, did, I, I spoke to him via text earlier and I encouraged him to come tonight. I don't know if he'll make it. Um, but I did. I can encourage him to come if he can. So we'll see if Zoom should be available regardless, I would guess, but you know, can't make any uh, assumptions there. So we'll, we'll see. Also, uh, I don't know how this happened, but at least two people seem to have gotten the original Zoom uh, number that I posted, which was a personal one, which is only good for 40 minutes. And that's and it was replaced by John's, as you know. Um, right. I uh, I don't know how they got it because it was posted, but only for a few minutes. So are you are you logging in there? So I have I'm going to have that on my uh, my cell phone, oh, and uh, and I'll uh, I'll let we should, you. we should also have it cleaned up so that um, everybody ha should have access to the the version of Zoom through Done as opposed to this method. Of so course, this is not this is not the uh, proper way we would want to otherwise do it. But right, understood, understood. But at the moment, as you know, the uh, the done info is only available to one person. I'm more, and and I, we we mentioned that to Julian, and so that that was one of the things we discussed. Um, I think ultimately, um, it will be redistributed at some point. Just that come that some point is not this very minute. So. Yep. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll work with what we've got. Um, there was a discussion about whether this meeting may have been a bylaws violation. And I said, I went through, I went back to the bylaws. I go, it actually doesn't say anything about who can call a meeting. It, it's uncommon um, to do it the way it's being done. But obviously, given one of the items on the agenda, um, it's not like one person was going to call this meeting knowing that's on the agenda, right? It, it doesn't make sense. It wouldn't. Right. Like I get that. I get the theory, but you know, we, we don't have, for example, we don't have the 25th amendment. Right. At the, the president that we're going to ask for the 25th amendment. Like that doesn't work. It exists there in case he's unable to ask for it or whatnot. So I think that was one of the things. And once I said that, I think then he realized. Um, Further, I, mean, I took the position based on the bylaws that we had been asking for this for days and days and days with no response. So the president well, was, I, was absent. But, but, even, but even still, even, even if he responded, he could choose not to put it on the agenda, right? Like there, there, there's no matter what you do, there's gonna be a problem in terms of right. calling the meeting. Right. Um, are, we, are we starting? Oh. Um, We've got another 10 minutes or so. No, I know. Are we starting, which one are we starting with? The original one. And then the special. And oh, I, I, okay, fine. I'm planning to, I want to um, preface for everybody that this is a process meeting. This is not a meeting to, to, to debate no. the merits of the motions. This is to debate whether the motions should appropriately be on the agenda. So anyway, I want to make sure people know that because I think we're going to have a lot of people log in who expect to express opinions about the motions themselves. Yeah, I agree. I don't think that's our purpose. So, I'll. Do you want to? Uh, you're welcome to run the meeting. I I've been planning that I I would need to do it, but uh, I'm. I can be. Glad I, to defer. I I figured out the best way. Um, um, the best way. The hard the hard part here is to make sure that we have um. Because it's not a panel. Right. You have to give people the ability to mute themselves 
right. and hope and, and hope, hope the others, do. the other. Well, I can mute everybody and then give them the ability to unmute themselves. Um, but ultimately, if they somebody does get into service, then the only way to do it is it would be to mute everybody and then single handedly tell people either even the three of us or four of us, if Martin arrives or another board member. Um, hey, John. Um, in order to, to do it right. So hopefully that works, but we will see. Yeah. Have you got yourself set up as host, Charlie? No, you have, you have to appoint me, John. So go go to the, the participants section or add participants and then, okay. and then put more and then it make me host and then it will transfer it over. Do we know who uh, not Arthur Fons is? I believe I've seen that name before in a meeting. Okay. I'm not sure I know who that is. I don't know who it is. The Fonzarelli. Somebody's got a radio playing in the background. I think that's John. Okay. No, I've got a TV. I've got a TV going on a game. I'll turn it off. Okay. Mr. Mr. Not Arthur Fonzarelli, you want to identify yourself by chance? I guess not. Maybe not. Maybe not there. Maybe they'll come back. Also, at some point, um, when we're in the meeting, um, the question of of censure and removal for board members has come up, and I, I want to talk about it. But I want to uh, go through the bylaws and explain how it works according to the bylaws, because I don't know if everybody knows that, and I suspect most of the people who will be in the meeting, if there are people. Uh, will not have read our uh, our bylaws, so uh, it's a fairly you know clean cut uh, process, but it may not be what people expect. So I, I want to. So my question about that, uh, Charlie, is uh, when we get there, uh, might you uh, share a screen and put the bylaws on your screen? You can. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I think you know the right uh, only reason is if I'm at work and I've got like yeah yeah three screens across I got I got I have a dual screen and it's connected to a to a TV monitor as well and so you might get a whole lot of stuff that's you are attorney client privileged there. well could could you could you make the screen that's active the one with the porn on it <laughs> John you're you're, you're recording the message, meeting so far man are we yeah. recording. Yeah, speaking of which, um, you know, you didn't deny it. You really, Charlie, you're an you're an attorney. The number one thing is you deny. There deny, is no deny, like deny, that. deny. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to make a motion at our next board meeting that the three of us get some sort of cosmetic application to make our foreheads less shiny. Yeah, that's unfortunately the sad truth. I've got it text my wife before we get started. I think we'll be able to get started fairly soon. Couldn't you just shout to the other room, muzzle the kids? She's she's not there. That's why I have to text her. Well, can between the two of us, we go from sea to shining sea. Uh, we're on different oceans. You're on the Atlantic. I'm uh, I'm not on an ocean at all. I'm on a lake that is known as uh, I forget the Chinese the name in Chinese and it translates to Black Pool Lake. Oh, good. I think my wife just showed up. Charlie's okay. got this look on his face like I don't want to be associated with these two yahoos. Writing I'm writing work email before we start. I'm trying to. Try to pound through this thing as quick as I can.
I am back. I've got two more minutes to seven. Let me make sure. I don't know that my clock's right, but I'm showing four minutes till seven. Six, it's almost it's six fifty eight, almost six fifty nine. But we might as well, just in case a couple more people join us, because like people have mentioned they were coming, so we should probably give it a couple minutes just to be safe. Yeah, I really think people will be disappointed because you know, what, guys, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go real quick to utilize the restroom before we begin. So as soon as I get back, we can start. Yep. <laughs> He's got this shit-eating grin on his face like he's already been at the, to the restroom. You know, maybe we can just blow off the meeting and sit and talk about uh, uh, Circulon versus Cafalon, you know, pots and pans. So what do you think? I don't know too you much know, about Cafalon, but I do know that Circulon is fairly expensive. Uh, they go on sale at, at uh, Costco every once in a while. I just got a new set a few months ago. Big fan. I hate to tell you, but about the last three years, I'm either going to go out to eat, I'm going to have it sent in by a Grubhub or something, or I'm going to get a TV dinner. The, the thought of having to get pots and pans out, uh, cook, and then clean up afterwards just deters me. Wait, wait, wait. You, you, you get... Oh, how did Gloria get my... Thing. I'm sorry. I've got to figure out how to get into this on my phone. Hold on a second. Man. Let's hope I used a password I remember. I presume we shall begin, no? Uh, we shall, but let me take a second. Gloria tried to join and she went to the wrong room. So okay, I'll give her, we'll, we'll give her another minute. It's not, not a big deal. No, no, no. Let me write to her and let her know. Oh. Just a second. I don't know how she got that. It was posted, but only for a few minutes. And we, but, she, but if, if, she, if Gloria got it, then it's, then she, she got the email. It would have gone out with the email, so she pulled it. Out. Which got corrected. Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, let me find her. Oh, here's, here's what I want to do. So, um, how participants? New participants upon entry. Friends will be muted. It's fine. Off meeting. In the waiting room. No. What if I can have two Zooms open at the same time? You can have one on your phone. Yeah, but I'm not able to log into it somehow. Let me see if this works. Oh, no, not going to work. Okay, let me just write to her. Man, I only sent it to three people. Okay, let me. Hello, Jessica. Hi, Jess. Okay. Uh, I'm almost back. I'm just checking I, to see if I there's heard a. Jessica's here. Hi, Jessica. 
Hello. Is here. Am I muted? No, I'm not. You are not. And I'm I'm gonna try to log in to the other one from my phone just to see to make sure there's nobody there. Um I wrote to Gloria, I think it's I got a message that she had logged in and I can't log into it. Let's because you're already in one. Yep. Yeah. And I was tried it on my phone. What's happening is uh, we had posted for a very short time. It says, it says waiting for the host to, to start the meeting. So I'm the host. Let me see if I can figure out how to get into it somehow. Wait another minute. That's fine. I did. It's only Gloria right now, and I did write to her. There's Marsh. And Barry. Oh, Barry's here. Good. Marsh is here. Anyone know who not Arthur Fons is? Oh, no. Uh, Crystal's trying to get in, too. Marge. I'm not getting any emails here. Um. Let me give this to her. Can you hear him? Oh, there I am. Thank you. Hi, Marge. Marge is muted. Oh, here she is. Okay. Um, well, why don't I uh, call so, this order? Yeah, good call. Yeah. Um, Okay, I'm gonna try and take some notes while we're doing this. Um, this unfortunately is not our normal uh, Zoom account and um, for kind of obvious reasons. And uh, so it's, we're gonna struggle through making this work. Um, it's actually John's account that we're using. Question, and, why is it obvious? I don't, uh, tell me oh. why it's obvious. That so, we're not using a, a normal channel to do this. Because the normal channel, only one person has the login credentials. And he's not here right now. And he wasn't responding when we talked about making this meeting. So we couldn't use, we didn't know we'd be able to use the normal login. And one of and the so, right. And so his, his absence is the reason that we're doing it in a different way. No, it's it's a it's it's actually a, um, he was asked to set this meeting. Um, we are referring to Martin in case it's not clear. Um, and he was asked to set this meeting. Um, he's the only one that has a login that gives us the ability to uh, access. It. We spoke to to Julian today and said, you know, we all need Who's to have Julian. Julian works for Dunn, I believe. Okay, one of the people from Dunn um, works with Freddie, and said we need access to be able to. Be not the only person who sets this meeting, which is why we're looking at everybody's face. If you have it with, with including the public that is here and people that don't want to chime in rather than our normal panelist version, we had no choice but to use this version. Okay. As best Got we it. can, we're going to make the best of it. Thank you. Okay. I, but as I understand from some members of the public are trying to log in and can't, is, is there a. There is a password. Um, yeah, it's on the agenda. It's on the agenda. It, the, I, I the saw pa it. The password did not work for me. It did eight, for me. The eight, the eight little E C H L E, Jess? That didn't, that didn't work? Right, right. But um, I just uh, it, it, I just logged in from it worked for me. It worked for me. Zoom and it worked. The link, there's a link on the agenda that doesn't work. It takes you to just waiting for host. But if you actually type in the meeting ID, to Zoom, it does work. That's how I did it. That's correct. I'm trying to see if there's a way to fix that while already logged in. Um, and I don't know if I can do that. John made me the host to and able to try to make it work, but I don't, I've been trying to mess with it and okay. see if I can find Thank a reason. Thank you. Thank you. No luck. For trying. Oh, 
finally okay um let me let me start as best we can um we only have the technology we have um i think first of all let me make a prefatory comment i i think um this the purpose of this meeting this is the executive committee the purpose of this meeting is to talk about what goes on to the agenda for upcoming general board. This is not a meeting to talk about the merits of the motions. It's only about the applicability to the general board um, agenda. So, um, so I hope that that's clear. And I, and if any, I mean that may be a disappointment, but I, uh, um, I would urge everybody to uh, to check for general board meetings and to log into those to discuss the uh, the motions themselves. Okay, because this is really just about trying to figure out we have a lot of stuff on the agenda, a lot of issues, and we've got to figure out how to um, uh, how to get it all to work. And that was the purpose of calling this meeting. Um, with that said, the there are basically there are also two meetings because after we had posted the first meeting, oh good, I'm, uh, Gloria was trying to get in before, and I see she got in now. Um, there were two meetings uh, posted. What happened is we had uh, posted this meeting, the one that I've just started. Uh, after that, and within the 72-hour period, uh, time period, another very serious issue came up. And so we, we, we added a special meeting so that we could include in the agenda uh, the, uh, the issues that have come up regarding the placement of boulders uh, under the, uh, the I-10 uh, uh, underpass uh, and also to, uh, to discuss the question that's come up regarding uh, censure um, and potential removal of, uh, of a board member. So when, uh, can I can I add those boulders are now gone? Yeah, we heard that. I, okay. I thank you, thank you for adding that. I didn't uh, I did know that, but uh, I at least I heard that from uh, one. I of the went emails. and looked. Okay, thank you, thank you. I okay. still haven't seen it. Just just to make it a clear, um, since we are not using our normal channel for this meeting, um, when the time period comes for public comment, if you are a member of the public and you're here to make a comment. You can just raise your hand um, and just keep yourself muted if you wouldn't mind. It'd be greatly appreciated. And we will call on individuals one at a time to speak. Um, and that way we have no shortage of um, people that will have a chance to speak when that time arises. Great. Thanks. And as you can see, Charlie's helping me out because this is the uh, uh, this actually the first time I've ever done a Zoom meeting where I was the host. Or I shouldn't say that second time, uh, but certainly one like this, and um, I'm a Microsoft Teams person, and I find this technology a little confusing. Um, Join the club. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Guys, and so we're not here all let's, night because there's a lot of topics. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's go to general let's public comment. It. The first thing is, is general um, uh, public comment, and let me preface this by saying uh, a couple things. One is, if you'd like to speak, um, please raise your hand. And uh, Charlie will uh, will will invite uh, speakers one at a time to speak. Uh, if you're calling in by a telephone, the way to raise your hand is, I believe, star nine. Uh, we're doing this by Zoom uh, in keeping with uh, with the uh, suspension of certain aspects of the Brown Act, because normally all meetings uh, uh, for a neighborhood council are, are are in person and within the confines of the uh, district. Um, and um, and general public comment, which is what I'm about to open, is about things that are not on the agenda. So if something's on the agenda and relates to the executive committee, please raise your hand and uh, and this would be the time to speak about it. If it's can, on the agenda, we'll bring it we'll get to it when we get to that agenda item. Ken, before we proceed farther, I'd like to make two brief comments. First, this we this meeting is being recorded at the request of Dunn. So we are recording it. Secondly, uh, to those of you who spoke at uh, the public safety meeting on Monday, I promise you, we heard, we heard you. Any board member who was oh, in attendance 
encourage you. You're more than welcome to give whatever public comment you want to give today. But so, if it's uh, just a repeat of what you said two days ago, hopefully you can find a way to make it a little bit abbreviated. Otherwise, this meeting will go on until about three in the morning and none of us wants that. So, pardon right. me, point of order. This is, a, which meeting are we in? We're in the first Second meeting. meeting. Which is? Which will be. Well, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I, I think I'm going to get, I'm going to try to cut, cut, cut on your point. Yes, technically speaking, Jessica, if they're, if they're here to speak about the Boulder issue, technically that's in the special meeting and not in the current meeting. So that would be an issue that they could bring up a public comment. It, with that being said, we are discussing that right after this. That might be a better place to bring it up. But for all me, for all intents and purposes, that is not a, that is not a item on this agenda for which they could be speaking about because it's not on this agenda. But is, it is, there only a, is there any obstacle to us doing the special meeting first, since I suspect it is the reason members of the public would be here, despite how fascinating our own agenda preparation <laughs> meetings are? Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to that, Ken and the viewer. I think that might, is, Crystal wants to comment on this, I think. Well, I mean, the start time for both the regular exec and the special exec are the same time. So I think it would be fair to the public to have that just one combined public comment period since they showed up at the time that the special meeting was scheduled. Agreed. So um, I'm gonna, if, if I can make a, a request here, Ken, I'm gonna agree with Jessica. I think we should probably do general public comment for the whole thing, do a um, cover the special meeting agenda first because I have a feeling that it is gonna be most of what people are here for. Um, and then cover all of the other issues because most of that's we'll cover thereafter. If that's all right, I think that's probably the. I most... certainly agree. All right. So then, with that being said, um, General Public Comment, Bailey, you've got your hand up, so you can go first. Hi. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. All I wanted to say is that the public safety meeting was um, it was really the most appalling meeting I've ever been to in my life. I had people that were on the meeting that left the meeting because of the language and the, I, I don't know if there's um, laws of civility for people making oh. public comment, but there ought to be. Um, we also um, were not able to get to um, many of our items on the agenda for the public safety because of that. And I understand that, that it was a very important um, it was an important topic and I agree it was important. However, um, certain things happened that shouldn't have happened in that meeting. Like when the person who was running the meeting did not have control of the meeting. And when the final comment and general public comment spoke and it was not what the general mood of most of the comments had been, they were allowed to come back on and say their piece of this, that can't be the final thing that's said in this meeting, et cetera. So I hope that Dunn will please take a look at the recording from yesterday, uh, sorry, the public safety meeting on Tuesday. I'm making that personal request and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, next, Terry's got his hand up. Oh, thank you for calling, calling on me. Um, First, two things. One was at the last general board meeting, I had my hand up, and I'm a board member, had my hand up throughout and almost was, I was called on only once. And other board members would just unmute themselves and just start diarrhea of the mouth. Are we going to start using civility and actually respect the raising the hand, or are we no longer going to raise our hand? And that's my first comment. And the second comment, I was running the public safety meeting and Martin had the wrong settings on there, and I was not able to control the meeting because of that. And I tried to get a hold of him, and because he was on the call, but he wasn't there to do it. So I just had to keep muting, muting, muting. Um, that was the problem. Now, as to the language, I understand people are very uh, passionate about what they are. And as we running any meeting, if they use foul language or what, that is their civil right to do that. And I will respect it 100% because that is their civil right 
to be able to be at a public meeting and say whatever they want um, when it's during general public comment. So I will respect it. I will support it. I may not like it, but I will tell everybody who's on this call that I made sure that they were out, uh, able to say what they had to say. Part of the problem was Martin and Mike did not set a time limit for public speaking. So therefore, once I took over the meeting, I could not then instill a time factor because it wasn't fair for the, for the speakers who came on when I took over the meeting to then uh, put a time limit on them when the people who spoke before did not have a time limit. So I apologize to the community if public, some of them were long speeches, but there was no way that I could go back because I had to be fair to everybody. So I just wanted to make sure and let everybody know why they weren't stopped because in the beginning, Mike and Martin did not put time limits on the speakers. So therefore I had to respect the other speakers after when I took over and allow them the same amount of time. Um, I wish we could have had a more civil conversation, but it's their, it's their right. We're in America that they could say what they want. And I respected that they were able to have that ability. That's all Thank I wanted you. to say. Thank you. There's, there's a hand raised by Rihanna. You can um, unmute yourself and speak now. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Rihanna. Um, I'm a resident living in the area. Um, I regularly do outreach with our unhoused neighbors. Um, I'm calling in to support a thorough um, wait, independent- Wait, Rihanna, Rihanna before, before you speak, just because I saw people add in, I just want to make sure. If you're, if, you're call, if you're looking to speak about the Boulder issue, on the homeless issue, and you're welcome to keep going. Um, that one is on the agenda next, and you'll, there, will, there will be a public comment period. It, so Char it, Char Charlie, point of order, we already let the public speak about other yeah. items coming up, such as the public safety meeting. I, that was are, my understanding as well. Can we yes. please let Rihanna speak? Absolutely, she's more than welcome. I'm just, I just wanna make sure that, that that one is coming. There are people that added, I'm looking at the participants list. She's absolutely welcome to finish. I'm not gonna try to cut her off by any means, but go ahead, Rihanna. Um, okay. Yeah, and just a friendly reminder to everyone here that interrupting public comment is a violation of the Brown Act, um, as is tone policing, which I appreciate um, Terrence calling out earlier. Um, as I was trying to say, um, I support a thorough independent third party investigation into the actions and involvement of any board members involved in the placement of these rocks and expulsion of any of those who were involved. Um, uh, myself and others share suspicions that Terrence and other board members were involved in this. And so this really highlights the need for this to be a third party investigation. I don't have any confidence that this board can investigate itself. So yeah. <laughs> I, Barry, Barry, please meet yourself. Thank you. Uh, Carrie Jones, by, I'm gonna, What's your last name? I apologize for that. Faina, um, you got it. Faina, uh, you, your hand is raised, so you are next. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Carrie. I'm from the area where the boulders were originally placed. Um, I actually know one of the families involved, um, so I was able to speak with them and get deeper into the story than um, many of the public were, if that makes any sense. Um, I do, from my understanding, there were some um, resources being given out um, and they were not accepted by some of the houseless neighbors. Um, I do think that it is important that we try and keep trying to offer these resources. Um, I don't agree with the boulders being placed. Um, yeah, that's all for my public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe there is nobody else with a hand raised, so that would conclude public comment. Okay. Uh, so the first item, and I apologize, I didn't write the agenda, so let me just read it out loud, is review of possible actions of SORO NC board members regarding participating or organizing uh, the placement of boulders on the sidewalk of the Cataraugus um, 
uh, well, it's whatever it means, the underpass of the I-10 freeway. Um, so I, actually, let me turn over if I can for a second to John. I'm not sure what the wording means. We're talking about, I think what you're talking about is the, the accusation, the suggestion, the, 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 the statement that uh, board members were involved in this. Um, is that what, what, what you're meant? Well, what basic, basically what I wanted to do was lay out the fact that we have a fact situation. We know that boulders showed up there. We have an allegation that the boulders placement was instigated by one or more Soro NC board members. But at the moment, we don't have anyone who is really willing to come up or has come up and said, we know for certain that it is X, Y, or Z who's sitting on the Soro NC board. We have a lot of allegations, but we have at the moment very little proof. John, I, be I believe the other issue, according to the emails I've seen, was not only that it was placed, but that that person then said it was placed. They were that they were an, a SOAR NC board member and were therefore placing those rocks based on a SOAR their position. A, yeah, a, a position. Right. Which, so let me let me say something on this because I I, I took a, a, a few reads through. Of, of our bylaws related to this. And so, um, and so what happens, what, what are the issues for which some, someone can be censured and potentially removed from the board? That's I, I think the, what we're talking about and how is that done? The process of doing that is also worth talking about. But uh, if somebody from our board were to participate in a criminal action which is, you know, hostile architecture is a criminal action in California. Um, we actually, that's not our purview. We're, I don't think anybody is, is, is for criminal activity of a board member, but that's criminal activity. That's not what our bylaws talk about. The bylaws are about somebody violating um, their, the, the trust in terms of um, their authority related to, well, let me let me find the actual wording. I should should read it. But um, and if anybody has, because we're all, most of us on computers, has the bylaws. I I, I have the censure and removal good. bylaws up. But just good. to be clear, the actions are not limited to censure or removal. There are other consequences that I could occur, understood. such as disbanding the public safety committee or removing officers or committee members from it in light of public comment. There are other options than your censure or removal of a board member. So well, and there's another one also, which is grievance. I, I was going to get to all of that, but I think we need to go through things in a systematic way. Um, so... So a motion to censure a board member may be initiated by any three board members. Correct. And as, the grounds as, for censure include, but are not limited to persistent disruptive conduct <laughs> at meetings, violations or abuses of the board's bylaws or rules, violations of the code or conduct, acting on behalf of the board without authorization, which does seem to be an operative concern here, and misuse or abuse of the censure or removal process by acting in bad faith. Exactly. If committing a way, crime the, in the name of Soro is not of grounds for censure or removal, I would be shocked. Wait, say that again? If committing what? a crime and attributing that crime to Soro uh, is not a grounds for censure or removal, I would truly be astonished. No, no, absolutely. But but the key phrase there is and attributing it to, to Soro, because the fact that an individual acts as an individual is not what's here. The fact that they then go and attribute it to saying, I'm doing this on behalf of Soro, that's absolutely a cause for censure. There's no question about it. Um, so uh, based on what you just read. So that's, uh, I, I agree with you 100%. Um, Sorry, censure- Guys, guys, Wait. first things oh. first is public comment on this Sorry, topic. I just wanted to add, or, add something for clarification. So it's not just a crime that's um, relevant in this instance. Honestly, it could be somebody going out and passing out food to people who are hungry and doing something very good, but doing anything in the name of SORO that wasn't a sanctioned SORO event is what is causing um, someone to be uh, able to be censured. Right. And, and I think, the, let's add to that, the reason I think Jessica, and I don't want to speak for you, Jessica, but I think that, that the, the issue in terms of uh, that not being the only mechanism is let's talk about what censure is. 
censure is certainly the most uh, common and visible um, means of, of, of addressing board member misbehavior. But to, to read it specifically, the purpose of the censure process is to place a board member on notice of misconduct and to provide the board member with an opportunity to correct the misconduct. What I, what I haven't gotten to yet, by the way, that I believe that wording comes from Bonk. We have uh, uh, Julian is here. Uh, maybe he could correct me if I'm wrong about that. If, you, if, if I've said that incorrectly, please raise your hand and we'll, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we'll, we'll take advice on that. Um, the, um, the censure process is a fairly long process. Um, the, it begins it's posted to an agenda at least 30 days after it begins. Um, the board member, you know, it, it get the board has to, according to the bylaws, and we've had public comment already that the board, you know, shouldn't do this, but the bylaws call, call for the board to determine uh, the validity of the claim of the misconduct. Um, and th it's not clear in the bylaws if the um, if that determination can be made before, during the 30 days after the initial um, motion for censure is suggested, or if it needs to be before that, that's not completely clear in the wording that, again, my understanding comes from uh, the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. Um, but I would take the position that it can be done during those 30 days. Um, and... Um, and again, censure does not remove somebody from the board. Someone can be removed from the board it, as a predecessor action to that. They must be censured uh, at least one time by the board. Nobody can be removed from the board without having first been censured. So I wanted to make clear that there's a process here. And if this is appropriate, you know, um, we, we absolutely, first of all, we, we have to go through it if three board members bring a motion. Um, it's not optional. Um, and the, but, but let's not think that this is something that's going to happen overnight. Um, and it is a process and we'll follow the process. Um, I'd like to just interrupt for a second, Ken. I want to make sure that the public understands that the bylaws stating this process were given to us by done with no little or no room for interpretation or change. So these are the rules that we're expected to follow and they were handed to us. And I'd also like to expand a little bit as to this, the issue of breach of trust. On this board, the board acts as a whole. That means there is a lot of discretion given from one board member to the next, that the fellow board members are going to be respectful of that. That's why it is as serious an event as it is, because uh, the whole thing operates on a trust system. And if the trust is not there, the whole thing falls. Right. So can, can we just, if we're covering the bylaws, the last one that is probably relevant to the public, and then we should let them speak is the ability of the board to act quickly, uh, to disband or make changes to any committee. And that's in bylaws article seven, section three, uh, if anyone's looking at our website, <laughs> that can be done by a simple majority vote of board members. So if you want to make changes or disband a committee, that can be done quickly. And also, I have a question. Do we have any concrete details regarding what occurred as yet? I don't believe so. I mean, we know that rocks got placed. I mean, that's what the question, if we're talking about the rock situation, Correct. Which I presume yes. we are, um, I, they were placed. Um, and from what we've all gotten emails, essentially that somebody or some two people claim that they were from Soro NC and, and acting on the, the neighborhood council's behalf. With that being said, um, maybe the, the list of public comment, we might get there, but I guess let's start with Julian because Julian might be able to shed some insight on this issue, seeing as he's from 
Uh, Hi, good evening. I'm Julian Antonio from the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Uh, first, uh, before entering, uh, I want to ask something. On what item on the agenda are we? I'm sorry, I joined late because I sure. clicked on the link on the agenda and the link on the agenda is wrong. It wasn't so, working. Um, yeah, Julian, so we, 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 we started, start, given the public's interest, we started with the special meeting agenda. Item number three is what we're up to regarding the review of possible actions of SOAR NC board members regarding the placement of the boulders on the sidewalk on, on Colorado's. That's the issue we are currently starting with. Do you have that agenda? Um, let, let me look because I got the, the last agenda posted. What's what's the, is it, there's one that's, that says executive committee meeting agenda and the other one says executive committee special meeting agenda. We're on the special meeting agenda. We started there. Given okay, uh, I think this agenda hasn't been posted on the NS. I'm, oh. I'm looking what has been posted on the, on the NS. So I, I received an email stating it was on ENS. It's also on our website if you have access to the SORO NC yeah. website. Let me go there. It, to be clear, it's the second one on the website. The first one is the executive meeting. The second one is the second meeting says special okay. meeting. That is this one. Julian, are you adding anything here or should we start with, should we ask for public comment and then you can. So what, and what was the question that was asked? I can maybe help. No question. I just, just, to, I don't think there's any question pending at the moment. Um, there was questions about whether or not we had facts yet. And I think that was what I presume might come in the course of this, these yeah. comments that are just, assumed to Just maybe one thing, one thing, because if I understand well the discussion, it's about uh, the use of the century policy. Um, just make sure that the censure is about facts. It's not about interpretation of uh, behavior, it's about facts. And it's about fact of uh, that happen um, in uh, board member capacity. So if somebody have a specific behavior in his personal life, that's not the business of the neighborhood council and shouldn't, shouldn't be a censure. Um, so I have no idea what uh, happened. So don't what think is, that I'm, I'm taking party. I, I just want to make sure that uh, if some uh, post picture uh, on social media that you think is an inappropriate, but that's on his personal account, it's not subject to censure. Julian, just to be just to be clear, the question we're asking is if a board member is involved and goes out and represents himself to the public, is operating on behalf of the neighborhood council and either the assisting or the placing of those boulders, is that something that is subject to that board member being censured? If that board member, uh, well, uh, first disclaimer, uh, I'm not an attorney. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I try to provide recommendation according to the information that you, you, get, you give me. Uh, if that person claims uh, that um, he's acting in its uh, board member capacity, uh, then I don't think we can consider it, it's personal. It's uh, it regards the board business. Okay. I think that's what we call it expected. So and, with that- And it has to be fact. It's factual. We're, we're, about, is we're about to find out. Yeah. So let's, let, with that being said, um, let's, we'll call on the first, if we have a, a Nathan, your hand is raised. You can unmute yourself and speak. Hi, uh, yes, thank you for having me speak. I'm a resident of Los Angeles. I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, we do have evidence that Peter Ilef was the one who placed the boulders at, um, at least he was one of the participants who placed the boulders. Um, before the chat was muted, uh, there was a audio clip um, located from a YouTube link. If you click on that YouTube link, it's recorded from uh, the last meeting in which he explicitly says that he was the one who placed the boulders. We also know that he, um, that he was the one who started the GoFundMe page, um, which was which raised the money to uh, place the boulders as well. To be, to, just to be clear, um, the reason that the chat was in our normal in our normal system done is advised us to turn off chat 
Um, I didn't recognize that it was on when we started because we are not using our normal uh, system. That's why it was turned off, not because you guys were saying anything of, of I, just to be clear, I was advised to turn it off. Um, Nathan, is there anything else you'd like to add before um, I... Uh, yeah, you guys are a bunch of NIMBY fucks. <laughs> Uh, our next hand raised, um, Marge. I see your hand up. If you could just raise your hand through Zoom, that'd be helpful. But you can't; you, it won't let you. All right, I will. I will recall you where you are in line. I will remember. The next hand is Olga's. Olga, you're up. You can unmute yourself and speak. Here, um, I just wanted to mention something that I feel like isn't really getting talked about. In that, I was one of the first members of the public who filed a complaint about these boulders directly to the entire board. And uh, the next day I started receiving messages from Peter, the man who ran the GoFundMe and uh, Lori Levine, a member of public safety uh, and found out in a phone call that a board member who Peter was not willing to disclose gave my information to them, which implies that a board member was involved in this. Otherwise, why would a board member tell them about it at all? Um, so I'm just curious if that has any bearing on this discussion. Well, I, I would say it certainly has a bearing on fact finding where this this meeting is about determining what to do from an agenda perspective. This is the executive committee. We're not making a board decision here. We're deciding what's appropriate to move forward to uh, to our general board uh, and to be agendized for a general board. That's what the executive committee process tonight is about. Um, it's what you're saying is definitely relevant again from a fact finding perspective but that's not what we're doing tonight so it's something you know please uh, uh when we get to that point to that process if we get to that that's that's when we we need to bear that in mind and certainly if i have any involvement of the, of the process like that i won't have forgotten that you said that um i also i, I have no idea of what board member might have forwarded, uh, but I apologize that it happened. It's not something we should do. We should never forward uh, someone else's private information. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just wrong. Uh, but again, it's not a question. Um, I, it, I don't believe it was a board action. It sounds like some individual did that um, from what you're saying. And I apologize that it happened. Um, next up, next up is Rihanna. You can unmute yourself and speak. Hi, yes. Um, I just wanted to say I think it's very in inappropriate for Ken to be already dismissing Olga's allegations while simultaneously saying that fact finding is necessary. Um, I also want to point out that um, earlier Charlie said that he was expecting the public to bring facts to this meeting. So you guys are saying conflicting things right now. Um, so I just want to reiterate that the Neighborhood Council Empower LA and any other overseeing bodies should be investigating this like right away. That shouldn't even be a question, but if you need to agendize that or whatever, please do. Um, and if you don't feel like you have the facts to do a censure motion right now, that means you need to do more research. Um, but if there's any hesitance to do research or an independent investigation, that kind of leads me to believe that these board members have something to hide. Thank you, Ron. To, to, to be clear, I thought that people would be presenting facts. Um, I think that the factual presentation, and I don't think anybody's dismissed, personally speaking, I don't think anybody's dismissed Olga. And I saw that I've been mortified because I've now gotten multiple phone calls from people I didn't even know have my phone number. So um, the fact that somebody called and or emailed you personally, Olga, is disgusting. Um, I, I expected that fact would come out from this meeting. Um, and I'm more than happy, personally speaking, Ken, I don't agree with your assessment. I, I'm happy to hear those because I think it does relate directly to whether these items need to go on the agenda. Um, Larry, you are the next one with a hand raised. You are up next. Thank you. Um, you know, I just wanted to say that uh, I agree that uh, about the problem of somebody representing themselves um, as uh, a board member, particularly if they implied that this was an official action. Um, however, I would like to say that twice my daughter has been accosted walking under that, that bridge by the homeless. And certainly the city has failed to solve that problem. Uh, certainly they should be censured. 
And um, while I thought that there was probably more creative and better things that could be done, um, this is a problem in our community. And this board is not handling it. The city is not handling it. And, um, you know, I applaud anything that is not violent that is bringing the severity of this issue to the community because it is not fair that my daughter, a 15 year old, cannot walk from my neighborhood to an adjoining neighborhood without being accosted by people. So that is something to consider. Um, but there is no doubt that if a board member represented themselves as this being an official event and their official presentation, that is an issue. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Marge, you're up next. Thank you. Um, so it's hard for me to uh, shake my prior board member um, of this board status uh, and rein myself in, but I think there's a couple of things that are worth clarifying. One is that I believe there may be a misperception among the members of the public that, who have been advocating, and I'm grateful, very grateful for their advocacy, that Peter Eilif is a board member of SORNC. He is not a board member of SORNC. So Peter's admission on the public safety call the other night, which I was also on, is not an admission by a board member, just so, so the, the larger group of people who have now uh, joined and actually led in many ways this conversation are just really clear about that fact. And if you want to go to sorensi.org slash whatever, meet your board, you're going to see who are actually seated board members. So I think that's one thing that should just be clarified as we're trying to have a conversation. Um, a couple of committee members have been, names have been invoked. I'm not uh, super clear on whether committee members who are members of the public, but are not uh, board members who have been sworn in taken all, you know, pledged to follow the by bylaws, pledged to follow the code of civility, done the ethics training. I don't believe that committee public, members of the public who are committee, mem official committee members are, are subject to the same rules that official board members are. So we also need to keep those two uh, items clear. Uh, I'd like to point out that there is a code of civility that everyone has to take and that there is a clear article nine of that code of civility which says, I will commit to learn the applicable laws that govern neighborhood councils, including bylaws, standing rules, the Brown Act, ethics rules, city ordinances, that's the key one, and the city charter, and will not knowingly violate any of the above. So you make a, you pledge that, and then in the compliance section of the bylaws, it reiterates that you will abide by these things. So there is a pathway in writing of obligations that board members take, and I, and you know, Larry, you know, uh, you're an old friend. I know you well. I'm very sorry these things happened to your daughter. However, uh, this is an act of illegal dumping, which is unlawful, right? And so um, it is important that we try not to conflate issues. I think that everyone on this call, everyone who has a, a heart would prefer that, ho you know, unhoused people were housed, that community members, you know, felt safe, that your kid, people like your daughter aren't being accosted. We have an epidemic in the city, and I agree, we, we have to find better solutions, but committing unlawful acts is not a collect, correct solution, and um, making it impossible for people to, um, you know, be able to live even on the street, even with, with that little, to make that then impossible is also, it's just not a human-centered, compassion-centered way of solving the problem. So. Um, I don't know what those solutions are. I, if I did, I'd be rich. Um, but I do know that this is not an answer to that. And we can't negate the unlawfulness of this action just because it is also at the same time true that community members have been accosted or been abused as they're trying to walk through you know, that tunnel. Um, the last thing I want to say is that having spent 12 years on this board and done endless rounds of ethics training, I remember with great clarity that a large, the centerpiece, in fact, of the arduously long and rather dull ethics training that we all have to undertake is around the idea of a perception, right? So there, there are many, many examples offered in that ethics training where if there is a perception of something being problematic, then the correct action, the ethical action on behalf of the board member is to, to not engage in it because it creates a perception problem, even if in fact the problem in and of itself wasn't problematic, if it, it, it creates a perception of a problem, that is a problem. And so I would say that if there was a board member who was 
engaged in an unlawful act, right? And in doing that unlawful act, try to legitimize said behavior by using their status as a neighborhood council member, then whether or not it is there in the detail of the bylaws as a member of the public now and as a former board member, this is a perception problem. It is a perception problem for that person to continue with a position of authority in our community when they have been endowed with some sort of responsibility to, to use that um, you know, uh, with, with ethical you know, um, uh, responsibility and that they haven't and, and worse, they've used one thing to legitimize an unlawful thing. This is a perception problem. And I think that that is something that the board needs to also consider carefully. Okay, thanks. Marge. Um Crystal, your hands up, and I'm not really, I don't, I know, is, are you considered a part of the public for purposes of this meeting? Because I it's an executive committee meeting. As a member of the public for this meeting, because I'm not part of the executive committee. Yeah, down my time. Yeah. Correct. Um, no, no, no other hand is raised, so it would be your turn essentially to speak regardless, so go ahead. I have a question because this agenda item is written in such a way where it's pinpointing the action of placing the boulders as the topic of conversation. Whereas I, you know, have seen evidence and have evidence um, at hand that shows that a certain board member has presented actions um, related to um, cleanups, such as the boulder placement, um, as being um, work of the board. So, you know, I don't know if, if it if it's okay to talk about that at this moment, um, because it's not Boulder specific, but it is you know presenting um, work that somebody that a board member is doing on their own time as being work that's sanctioned by the board. Crystal, since I wrote the agenda, I'll answer that part of it. It was my intention to, to gather facts and be kind of open ended in what the agenda said to allow that. So certainly anything that would pertain to the actions before or after the dropping of the thing to, would be covered in my mind. Okay. Well, there have been many, many next door conversations, of course, um, about the underpasses and um, the Silver boundaries and about the encampments that are happening there and the trash and the dumping and all of that. Um, and uh, Terry, who's a board member, has participated in, the, in those discussions and talked about efforts that he's made to um, communicate with the city and with uh, LA Sanitation to get those areas cleaned up. Um, but unfortunately, in, so, in doing so, in having those converse, conversations, he's presented that cleanup, those cleanup efforts as being um, actions of the board. You know, I've been on the board for you know, four and a half years now, and I don't recall a time when the board has um, approved a motion to work to urge LA Sanitation to clean up the underpasses. Um, so as far as I'm aware that that's not board sanctioned work that's happening, that it's something that he's doing on his own time, which, you know, is, is something to talk about, but it's not board sanctioned. Thank you. Um... Yes, we'll go. So, J J J Jess is the next person with her hand raised. Uh, sorry, I'll speak now if this is the only time. If, uh, yeah. It will then be just executive committee people I'm, talking. I'm not entirely sure. Here, here's my uh, issue. Generally, when we have these meetings, executive committee, the issue is how we set the agenda. And therefore, in those meetings, all board members have the rights to discuss them. Um, and any member can attend any committee meeting and sit on that committee for the purpose of the meeting. I'm not, not officially on the committee, but may speak in terms of discussion. Julian, you want to chime in here? Feel free if I, I'm not sure. Yes, uh, good evening uh, again, Julian and Tillin, Department of Neighborhood Environment. I, I'm sorry, I would have a, a, a bad role in that meeting. Um, uh, I, I just want to explain that this is a community meeting. So committee meeting will make recommendations to the board. In this case, the recommendation will be the agenda that um, the, the chair and the president will uh, then post. Um, I, I can see that there is a lot of board members in that, uh, in that room. Uh, there is, uh, unfortunately or fortunately for uh, the, 
the transparency of all the operation of government bodies, there, there is a, a law called the Brown Act. Uh, this uh, Brown Act um, imposed some restrictions uh, on the participation of board members to uh, committee meetings. So, for example, we have clearly some uh, member of the board that are member of this committee, of the executive committee, um, and the other board member shouldn't uh, take part to the meeting um, uh, uh, just to make sure that we don't have a majority of the quorum that is taking part to the meeting. Otherwise, there will be a potential brand act violation. If we don't have a majority of a board member, a majority of quorum of board member present at the meeting, uh, we can imagine that the board member make comments, at public comments, and that's it. No discussion, no exchange with other uh, no discussion with the, the the board member that are member of this committee. Uh, otherwise, um, it's a problem because the discussion would happen outside of the board. So, Julian, Julian I ask to, you, for clarification, Julian, isn't isn't that isn't the fact that it was a publicly noticed meeting considered a meeting where no we're not in violation of the Brown Act? No, no. The, the fact that it is publicly noticed makes that the committee. And meets and will make a recommendation to the full board. Um, member of the public might be interested, not so interested about how the uh, agenda will be, the item will be agendized, but want to be part of the discussion and they might, they might expect that the discussion will take place at the board meeting and therefore they don't attend the committee meeting. And if you have the discussion now, they are misguided because when they will go to the, uh, to the board meeting, the discussion will have happened already. So for Transparency, uh, we highly, highly recommend that if board member that are not committee member attend the meeting, uh, they don't participate, they can observe and don't express any opinion, even physically. Um, if we are sure that there's not a majority of quorum, so which in that case would be- uh, we, we, don't, we don't have- Seven, I'm I'm majority seven board members. Uh, if we don't, if we're sure that we don't have seven board members, including the the, the committee members uh, present, uh, then the this board member would be able to make a public comment, but just a public comment and not engage in the discussion. We we have we have I think we have seven. I'm, I'm counting ten. Right. Yeah, counting we have one more. We have we have more than seven. We I'm counting so, ten. So I, I would invite you to be safe. Uh, we and and if I say that, it's not because I want to. Uh, close the discussion because uh, I, I think the discussion deserves to be made. Um, but I want to also protect you because there are people that have many different opinions on this topic. And if if there is any opportunity to uh, to challenge your board for a act violation, uh, this is your board that will suffer from it and won't be able to uh, to discuss the matter in a proper way. So I would invite you to discuss what should be the item that will be agendized at the meeting and that that discussion at a full board meeting. And I, I'm sorry that that might be frustrating for the people that want to see things moving forward uh, faster, but unfortunately, this is the, the pace of uh, a government body. Uh, sorry, point of order. It sounds like we have no problem. We will not be voting on motions. This is just to agendize a meeting. If we could not discuss what would be on the agenda, for a general meeting in advance, we could never have a general meeting. I would agree with that assessment as well. Yeah, so the the, the, the committee can vote uh, a, a, an item that will be agendized at the board meeting. The Otherwise, the committee just makes recommendation to the board. Okay, should I? Go ahead, Jess. With public comment? Okay. Go ahead. All right, uh, in the interest of fact gathering, I did attend the public safety committee meeting at which several members of the public, including myself, asked Terrence Gomes, a Soro board member, sometimes called Terry, uh, whether he could admit or deny the accusations against him, he did not respond. This could be a great fact gathering opportunity for him to say whether he did or did not participate in this activity. For now, he's no, no comment. So, um, Bela, your hand is raised. You can unmute yourself and speak. 
Hi, I just want to ask if I'm going, if I'm allowed to say, ask this question. Um, Crystal, who I have a tremendous amount of respect for, you mentioned that you never heard about this type of um, cleanup or solutions to um, different things uh, being agendized. I do believe the public safety meeting has had that on their agenda. Um, I would, I don't know offhand um, exactly when it was, but I think that we would need to look into that to just make sure that that's correct. Okay, but I'm talking about um, a full board position, right? Even if some, if a committee works on something, we cannot present it as a full board sanctioned event. But right. thank you. Okay, thank you. Correct. Uh, can Can I ask though if the public safety committee has discussed and endorsed this? I would love to know. It, not while I served on it, but I did resign, and we can get to that in the next subject. I didn't Wait. say we did. We endorsed this. I just she mentioned that um, she never heard about any kind of uh, cleanup or um, solutions going through the neighbor, um, the Soro NC, um, how to help or deal with this. I believe that's what you said, Crystal. Is that what you said? Yeah, but I was referring to the general board, not a committee. Okay, just, thank you. Just to be crystal clear on this subject, and I apologize for the pun, Crystal. Uh, what I think the issue basically is coming down to is you had a public safety committee that may have had a position, but the public safety committee, just like every other committee, cannot unilaterally take a position. It needs to, at that point, be referred back to the general board for confirmation that that is a Soro NC position. So what I believe Crystal is saying is although the public safety committee may have taken positions, it was never forwarded to the general board during her tenure. That is what I'm saying. Thank you, John. So um, let me I, try I, and get things back on track. I, I don't see, wait, Ken, let's, let, 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 let's be clear. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see anybody left in public with a hand raised. Um, I will give you 15 more seconds. You want to raise your hand and speak on this topic? Um, Charlie, this is John. Can we ask some member who's attending if he'd like to give public comment? Um, I guess in theory you could ask if, I mean. If the, re the reason I'm saying that is I'm looking and I see Peter Illip is, uh, in the, on this meeting, and I would be delighted to hear from him as to whatever he would care to say. If he would like to raise his hand, he is more I'm than here. happy to. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, you're more than happy. To, welcome to speak. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'll just open uh, by saying today um, uh, the boulders were taken away. That um, uh, I was contacted yesterday, uh, Wednesday one-ish by Liz Carlin, who said that um, a Lieutenant uh, Karen Bowie, as in rock star David Bowie, of the street services, she was an investigator slash enforcer, that I was going to be charged with um, felony dumping unless the boulders were clear within 24 hours. Um, <laughs> kept my cool. Uh, and uh, the company uh, that would have been hired to, to bring in the boulders uh, said, no way, they didn't want to touch this, it's a hot potato. So um, uh, again, the members of the community uh, rallied around me and the cause, thankfully, and uh, members of the community, uh, including Terrence Gomes, Terrence found his neighbor, Pepe, concrete company, and today they came for, uh, to uh, $2,250 uh, that the community has given me donations for, and we took them away. And, uh, and then um, there was a really great guy that came out, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read his card here. His name is uh, Sela Tay of Environmental Compliance Officer. And he told me that um, he, uh, the case is now, whether I'm to be charged has been handed over to his department and to him. And uh, we had a, uh, at first I didn't want to talk to him. I said, you know, my lawyer, because I had to lawyer up, you know, my lawyer said I shouldn't talk. And, um, and uh, but he was really, he, he kind of vibed me in a nice way. And uh, so I opened up 
and I we just told him everything. And uh, and then it was a great moment because all these neighbors from Rainier started coming up, and neighbors from Helms um, Helms sister came up, and all of a sudden all these neighbors from Helms Rainier were sweeping the the sidewalk, and they were bagging the you know bagging the uh, the ashes and putting them as asked over by Regents and uh, Cataragas. People were driving by their cars and they stopped, and like. You know, they were expressing quite frankly, like, oh, where, where the boulders go? Uh, it was so great. Whatever. Um, but Te, uh, Sela Tay was able to hear all this, and he realized that it truly was a community thing. And I, I, uh, it looks like I will not be charged, that I, I got it done within 24 hours. They were fully ready to pull the trigger on having the city do the clearing, and it would have been some outrageous bill that would have probably been stuck in my own mailbox. And uh, I'll just end on saying, um, I, you know, I'm the focal point because my name's on the GoFundMe. I'm just going to say this is a we thing. This is not Peter Iliff, some rogue dude who like did this. This is this is 30 members of the Helms and the Rainier District community, and you know, frankly, working with a lot of people in CD5, CD10, LAPD, and on Soro. All right. It was always like no paper trail. Let's see what we can get done. And uh, I'm just telling you, it, 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 this was a community action. And, uh, you know, we've had our hands slapped and, you know, I'm going to have to be at a lot of money and uh, hang my head. But I'm just telling you, this came from the heart. And let me, oh, let me say one other thing. I had a wonderful conversation today with Dan Donahue. Don, if I'm saying his name right, I think, I believe he's the leader of um, Street Watch LA. And after all this doxing, and I've received death threats, you know, I've received like, you know, my, you know, my, my reviews on Twitter are, are, are outstanding right now, as you can imagine. Um, but Dan call, uh, texted in peace. And so we ended up, I picked up the phone. We had like a 45 minute conversation and we really hurt each other. Um, there's a really nice piece on KCRW that was done. And if you, if you haven't heard it, uh, get on the website and listen to the KCRW piece that has interviews from me and you know and the uh, Street Watch guys. And it, it talks about how when we were on the meeting on Tuesday, uh, I don't know if you realize they they sent like 25 kids over to Cotaragas to like try to get the boulders away and they were you know tagging Eat the Rich and all this stuff. And I walked over there and I, I just said to him, good for you, you're gonna change the world, you guys. You know, I, I really respect your hearts. And by giving that approach, they then didn't, mug me and kill me they we had like a half hour conversation it was very productive so i am hoping through all of the madness that we are going to come to a greater solution that we are going to find a solution that can help keep our tunnel safe and then can keep these these uh, i'm learning the new word houseless uh individuals get them the care they need i mean i think the thing is the city of la has let down our communities and let down the homeless people who, you know, by supporting that they live in tunnels and not get them into proper housing with the, the care and services they need. So maybe this is a bridge for us to start having a positive dialogue, how to get it done. And um, again, uh, Channel 7, Miriam Hernandez wants me on television tomorrow and to talk about it. And I've said, why just me? Why can't we have a bunch of us? And from both sides, why can't we have a healthy discussion? So I know a lot of you want to hate me, Guys, I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I, I love people. I'm sober 16 years, I, I sponsor guys. I, I come from a place of love. I come, I'm sorry for all I've done, I, but I truly just wanna do good in this world and, tr and try to help others. And let me help you. Let me make this right. Help me to be a better man to make this right. Can I answer any questions from any of you? Jessica, go ahead. Yes, certainly, Peter. Sure. You refused when I asked you a couple of days ago to tell me who gave you my personal cell phone number, Olga's information, and the other email, personal email addresses of women who serve on Soro who you emailed because you disagree well, well, with okay, them. May, Will, you may, I, Will you tell us now? Will you tell us now? Excuse me, can you have a less hostile tone because I'm trying to keep a nice tone. So I, I react to your hostile tone. But let me say, I did um, text you back and I, I said, here's my number, can we talk about it? 
and you refused to call me. And then so I said, where I got it was I was given a copy of Olga's email to the entire board. And when I got that copy, I just took all the, all the emails off of that and I wrote my gratitude letter. So I'm sorry that some of the letters on Olga's um, uh, email to all of you had some personal addresses. I apologize. And that's the honest truth of how I got them. And I'm sorry if that was offensive to you. Uh, I, I apologize. And I, but I did tell you that. So I don't know why you're asking me again. I mean, I, I told you that. Peter, but what oh, you so haven't told us is yeah. who gave you that uh, email. I read, John, I, John, wait. I we have, it, it's, a, it's a public comment period. Nicole has her hand raised and she would be the next one up. So Nicole, if you would unmute yourself and you would please feel free to speak. Well, I appreciate Peter's attempt to educate himself and um, use words like, um, what's the one that you used? Houseless and um, these kinds of um, aesthetic changes to, to your approach. When you say that the Street Watch team uh, who are volunteers that are committed to uh, helping the unhoused were going to mug you if you weren't nice to them is- I did not say that. I did not say you said, that. You said I, I approached Peter? them in a way so that you didn't mug, so you, they didn't mug me. You, you did, and this, and this, this is all recorded. So you can pretend like you didn't, but you did. So you're, you're muted. The so. bottom line is we've been getting guys, death threat. Guys, excuse me, excuse me. One person speaks. This is the public comment period. If you'd like to speak, please raise your hand and you will be called on in turn. If it is not you to speak, who is speaking, finish. Nicole, Nicole, I apologize, you can continue. I appreciate it. So I know your butt hurt that you've been called out. You did You did say, I because I was uh, nice to them, they, uh, they didn't mug me. So I would encourage you, if you are really concerned, to get involved with local groups and if you would like to fundraise, there is plenty of re plenty of places. The need is great, and to fundraise for uh, unhoused resident architecture to to make it un unhab uninhabitable for them is unconscionable, and uh, you're a douchebag. Um, you're still oh, muted. Oh, 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 Olga, you are um, up. I I'm gonna look. I promise if, I'll. If, I, I will give you one half, half a second here. Um, we've heard a lot of attacks. If we could try to, you have every right to talk how you want to talk, and I'm not going to stop that. Um, but if we can try to just be a little cordial, at least in terms of name calling, that would be appreciated amongst this board. Um, he was tone percent. policing. Sorry. Uh, I, I, Nicole, I hear you. I understand. I'm just asking. We could please try to keep the name calling to a minimum. That would be greatly appreciated by this board. With that being said, Olga, the floor is yours. I just want to comment that I drove past that location to check on the rocks after they were half of them were taken away and there was no graffiti whatsoever. I just want the board to know that Street Watch LA, which is a group that literally spends their own money to put unhoused people in motel rooms, did not do any kind of graffiti. This is a rumor that is totally unbased. There's no proof of this. Uh, like, I just really want you to realize that. And if you consider that, please ask the police for video evidence because the police were there as well. So they'll know. Thank you. If I can jump in, I, 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 I just want to point out that I think we're way off of our agenda. And this, I don't think the intention here, thank you for nodding, Julian. Uh, I don't think the intention is is a uh, to have a discussion of, uh, of of Peter's actions or uh, or any other community member. Uh, this is about what we as an executive committee can can uh, recommend to put onto the agenda for upcoming meetings. And um, it, I just think we're way off of uh, topic right now. And I understand the frustration and that this is a forum and people are using it and we need to have forums. I'm not suggesting that we not. I don't think anybody should should in, in any broad sense be silenced. I'm not trying to silence anybody, but I do think we're way off topic and we actually have a hard 
uh, uh, time limit here, which we're, we're going to probably extend, but we're, this meeting is scheduled to end at 830 and without a, uh, a, an agreement to extend it beyond 830, it, it ends uh, based on, on the, uh, uh, the way that this was noticed. I'm right. back to you, um, Charlie. Gloria, you're, Julian, are you making a point of order regarding this before I call on somebody else? Yeah, yeah, yes, please. Uh, it's it's not a general public comment section. So if the comment of the way the item should be agendized, it's not uh, a comment on the right item. So if, if people want to make comment, it's on the general public comment item. If it's not about the item that we're currently discussing, please, uh, I, I will ask you to interrupt and not allow people to make to, to come several times to, to provide comments and answering to each other. This is not, uh, th this is a government body meeting. It's a committee meeting. And I will ask you really to be more strict on the way uh, you, 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 you run this meeting. There's a fine line between strict compliance and and um, Jessica, I'm sure you can come up with the word that I'm missing here. Um, uh, cutting, um, what's that, John? The word is censorship, I think. Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. Um, I, I, to said, I totally understand. I totally understand. Just, just know that you are a neighborhood council, you're a government body, and you have to follow some rules. And it, and if you follow these rules, is to protect you. I, I, I believe that hearing out these people about what had gone on, applies to what uh, action we are going to be taking with regards to this situation. That's how I'm viewing it, which is why I'm allowing people to speak, um, whether I agree or disagree with what went on or did not go on. With that being said, Gloria, you are up. Yes, so Peter, so thank you for being so forthcoming today. Um, I see that there's a lot of discussion around Taryn's involvement in this, in this activity. Were there any other board members um, involved in the planning process of this? Um, Peter, you are, you, are, you are muted. If you'd like to answer there we that go. question. Are, are we, yeah, we're, we're way I off. I just would like to say that. Um, Wait, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, Peter, one second. This actually, the answer to this question actually applies to whether we're taking any action to the board members. And for that reason, I would like an answer to the question. If you can keep it very brief and direct, Thank you. otherwise I will be forced to mute you again, Peter. Are you talking to me? Yes, yes. please. Okay, uh, I, I would rather not say. Thank you. You're welcome. welcome. All right. um, Marge, uh, your hand is up. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Peter, uh, you gave us a 15 minute bit about um, being on television, being on the radio. Um, those kids are gonna save the world. You're a man with a big heart. You just wanna do good in the world. The item on the agenda is review of possible actions of SOAR NC board members regarding participating or organizing the placement of boulders on the sidewalk. If you have material knowledge that is factually relevant to this agenda item, to Julian's point, that this board is or this uh, committee is currently discussing, it would seem like a good thing to do. I also, unfortunately, I wish I hadn't heard, and I also wish maybe I hadn't typed, but I did, but it's being recorded anyway. I also heard you say members of CD5, CD10, the police, and SORO were involved in this in a no paper trail kind of way. Let's see what we can get done. These are problematic statements, given that there are rules that, that govern actions in the city. So um, I, don't, I don't think you're a bad person, Peter. I think you, you seem like a big loving guy, but being a big loving guy does not absolve one of one's civic responsibility to abide by laws and also civic responsibility when you do have the knowledge, which would illuminate the very item but not just this committee is discussing, but there's gonna be a board meeting and then there's gonna be another board meeting and we've got all these members of the public. So I find it hard um, to reconcile your statements about yourself um, with the fact that you could actually answer a question um, directly and uh, illuminate this issue. Perhaps a board member should ask you, a committee member should ask you the question. Thank you. I agree 100%. Thanks, Barry. Um, in I'd the like interest to in chime in for just a second, Charlie. Uh, we have 
ostensibly 25 board members. We have three openings now. That means we have 22 active board members. And by your not responding to Gloria's question, you're casting aspersions that each and every one of us 22 board members may have done what uh, people have been accusing us of doing. Now, I know what I've done, I know what I have not done, but I can't prove to the rest of the world. And you have the opportunity to at least take 22 people off the hook. 21, John. I agree again. Thanks, John. Uh, so does the individual or individuals that uh, were helpful. I must say that I've had to retain a high, a high end attorney. And um, so I, I have to abide by what I'm being instructed by my attorney. And uh, I will also say that the work that was done with CD5, CD10, Soro, and LAPD was all no paper trail, it was just a lot of people trying to get something done to help right. the community when thank you guys that, get it done. All right, thank you, Peter. That's not, that has nothing to do with the item at hand. We've clearly decided not to answer that question. Um, Andrew, yep, you're, uh, you are the last hand raised. So you, I presume will be the last general public comment. You can unmute yourself and speak. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Andrew and, um, I live in, uh, Rainier Village. Um, uh, I don't know like much about, about this, but I was on the other, uh, previous meeting as well. I did like a little bit research to this problem. Um, but I kind of feel that this man, uh, Peter, I think like he's just doing his best to make the community better. Now, I think like he doesn't probably know the repercussion or risk on his actions, but he, he's doing this out of his goodwill from the community concerns. We do have like problems of the safety issue in the, in the tunnel, sanitary issue. Um, I mean, I, I have family, a family member that uh, was like stopped by, by the uh homeless over there i got my house broken into and what is the solution to this um for for maybe like for the executive to decide on the next agenda next meeting how to make sure that the tunnel is safe the park is safe the public the public facility is safe uh and sanitary as well as if like it is like for really a public use not just like solely for this it's not like because we don't have compassion. No, we as a Rainier Village people, I personally, I have compassion to the houseless people. And we want to do like what is right to help them. But that brings like number two, maybe like solution to the houseless people. How, I don't know like how much money that you guys have from the Soros. And um, maybe like we can probably buy the Venice Hotel that is like burned, I don't know. Um, and then convert it into like the housing, the homeless housing over there, or like move them like to a cheaper place like uh, Lancaster or Palmdale over there. I'm not sure. This is just like, just like all of the talk here, it sounds like there is, we just discuss and like just point finger on, on, on this without like thinking about what is the solution. And we have to think about what is the solution. And I believe that's why your organization is there. And I believe like you are there also like to fight also for the betterment of the people that lives in the area. So, and yeah, so that's that's my point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Larson, your hand is raised. I just wanted to say you should have cut that person off who they started speaking about something that was irrelevant to the agenda. Uh, this is an executive committee meeting about agenda items, not about coming up with random ideas for shipping people out of the city, that's all. Thank you. Um, we have no more hands raised. Um, so I'll, I will presume general public is over. Um, I, look, I, I, will, I will share my opinion on this. Um, I am highly concerned that somebody, um, I, I'm not gonna, start, let's start with this. I'm not gonna speak on the topic of whether this was a good or bad idea to place the boulders because I don't think that issue is what we are currently discussing now. That can be brought up at a different time. The issue that the, the, the ideas that Mr. Yip presented um, are maybe relevant at a future meeting about what to put on regarding how to um, uh, assist our 
<clears throat> our unhoused population. With that being said, um, I am, I am, I was, and am incredibly concerned with the actions of the people who not participated so much as claimed that it was on behalf of the Soro NC body. We have rules, strict rules at states that if you, the way you have the right to speak on behalf of a body is with the direct approval of this board. And if they, if there are people out there and the original messages indicated that people were there and saying they were acting on behalf of the NC. And for that reason, that is what I consider to be fraud because it is, and it is directly in violation of our board's bylaws. And therefore, I do think whether it is an internal investigation or a way to find an external investigation, and I don't know if we can even do that, um, we should do research about the project. And if somebody did, in fact, state that they were from the NC and doing it, they should be censured and or removed from our body because that is in direct violation of our bylaws and our rules and everything we stand for as a government body. That's, 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 that's my two cents on this piece. Though my problem is, is I don't know what we do at this point because it doesn't seem like we know exactly who did it or if they said it there from the board or it was something else. But I would suggest we put it on the agenda because I would love to hear the opinions of these people that are here if they have any fact finding details about what went on and if we can find out more, we should. Right. I so, have no standing, but I'd like it on the agenda as well. So the question is what goes on the agenda? Okay, I don't that that something was going on, going to go on the agenda was probably a foregone conclusion. I think we all know that, um, but I think the question is what. So again, I wanted to talk about what processes are available to us. I brought up and I started talking about the censure process, and the reason I brought it up is because one of the things that's been talked about is removal, and and if you read the removal process, it can't be done until at least one censure has occurred. So censure is the predecessor to removal. Other actions are not the predecessor to removal. Okay, so the question is how does how the censure occur? Censure begins with three board members bringing a motion. At this point, nobody has done that. So it's possible that the executive committee could do that. That's one possibility. Uh, there are other board members, any board members can. can, can it can't. You're, that's not correct. It can't. The, the, because it has to be, it cannot be the majority of a committee. And that would be the three. The I'm sorry, you're members. right. You're right. I wasn't thinking. I will, I will tell you, because I've spoken to, to members of our board, that that um, process has been started. There are people that are considering, and I'm sure it's not just one. There are probably more than one. But I happen to know of one that is being presented and likely to be presented very soon. Great. And if that's done, I don't think there's even a question about whether that goes onto the agenda. As I read the bylaws, it has to go on the agenda. And remember, it goes on the agenda at least 30 days after presented. So, so it would not go on the September agenda. Uh, it would go on at earliest the October agenda. And before we can hear the motion, we have to do a fact finding. So, um, so we have to know what the facts are. Right now, we have we we have we have a lot of suspicions. We have a lot of information. We have a lot of accusations. I don't know that we have an, a, a lot of facts. So we definitely need to do a fact finding, as you said, uh, and I agree with you, Charlie. I don't know how you do that, right? I mean, it's uh, it's a complicated question, but uh, but it's definitely something that we would need to do. I'd like uh, to weigh in on that a little bit. Yeah, I think. The question that was brought about by our public stakeholders today is an important one, and I want to address it. Are we equipped to judge one of our own in terms of fact finding? And I'm not sure that we are. I would That's like to see that we consider at least referring this to the city ethics department. It's a commission that's part of the city that is not affiliated with the neighborhood council and whose sole charge seems to be to do fact finding in issues such as this where the facts may be murky. Now, that's a positive. The negative to this, the negative to this is that you're going to 
Excuse me one second. I will get back to you in a second. I'm going to mute you, John. In the meantime, <clears throat> John, I, I, I muted you, John, here. I'm not unmute you. Now you're done. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. Oh. Wait, hold on. John, I, need, I muted you. I, 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 I Go ahead. Uh, the flip side of that is that you're going to have to wait some time for the city ethics department to come back with a conclusion. It's not going to be a very quick process, but it will be a thorough process. And I guess the question I'm asking the public is what do you want? Do you want quick and uh, murky or do you want lengthy and factual? Um, I believe there are facts from what I've been informed to support censure of a member. Um, I apologize for eating at this meeting, guys. If everybody's watching, I haven't eaten since lunch. I'm starving. Um, so far, I apologize. Anyway, um, there are people on this that are here today to actually have facts in support of that censure. Um, for that reason, I would, my recommendation for the agenda would be a motion to investigate and or censure those people involved in taking action that were not a, that that were otherwise not a, unauthorized nor approved by the board and acting in the board's behalf with relation to this action that was taken i think that serves the purpose of number one investigating which i think somebody mentioned whether or not that's us or a third party can be discussed at our board meeting and i think it should be discussed whether that's at all possible or and we can talk about in there a referral to the ethics, to the city ethics committee, because that can definitely be done. Um, additionally, I think it covers the issue of censure that we can recommend that censure be done. Um, obviously an investigation has to be done. We have to know facts, obviously who's gonna present it. But I think that making that recommendation at a very minimum to stop a person who's taking credit for doing something on behalf of the board is absolutely not okay and has to be stopped immediately. And really? as, as there are some board members here, if anybody wants to chime in, and draft this motion, you can feel free to give a little way and I'm happy to take it. Um, but with that being said, I think that is the um, that that is the proper motion at this point to put on next week's agenda. And just I would agree one would I would expand it to include the release of personal information of either present or prospective board members. That just can't be tolerated. Is that a is that a bylaws issue? Is that is that a censure reason? I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm I'm asking blindly because I'm not sure. It's wrong without a doubt. I don't agree with it at all. I'm wondering if it's a basis for a censure or not. Well, I think it's certainly an issue that uh, that warrants a standing uh, a standing rule that uh, about how we treat um, uh, confidential personal information. Uh, generally, because obviously we didn't, you know, when I say we, I'm mean not the board, but somebody who got that email didn't treat the information properly. That seems very clear. Um, so I don't know the details, but that again, it seems clear, and we should have it as a standing rule. Um, um, to, to be to be clear, because um, I'm a bit, and maybe I'm trying to provide some clarity. We have a meeting that was scheduled by Martin for tomorrow night or I should say tomorrow afternoon. Um, I fear that given the uh, composition of our board, we may struggle to get a quorum tomorrow because I already know that there are quite a few people who will, will be unable to make it due to religious obligations and work obligations at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. It's not exactly um, prime time, despite the fact that this is a pressing issue. Um, my, if, I, if I understand correctly, our meeting tomorrow night is to address a response to that, that essentially we're not involved in this, um, in the in these actions that were taken, and then next week's meeting, if we were to put this on, it would be um, um, regarding the what what happened with the board members. So again, tomorrow night is a statement about us making a statement about what went on and whether how we were we were or were not involved, which we obviously are all admitting we were not involved, and then next board. week about yeah as a board. Um, and then next week, the issue of send, whether it's censure or what we should recommend in terms of investigation. I think those, just to be clear, that is the, 
for clarity's sake, anybody who's here, because I think that the public would want to know, and there are quite a few people. Tomorrow's meeting is is with regards to that um, the statement. I see Julian's got a hand up. There's only four of us, Julian. You can chime in if you want. Feel free. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to react to you uh, and make a. Uh, what Ken said is correct. Uh, you guys can't agendize um, a central motion like this. Uh, there is a process. If three uh, board members uh, sign such a motion and send it to uh, the chair, it's automatically agendized at uh, a certain period of time, indeed, to respect the 30 day notification of the people that are uh, targeted by this censure and also the department has to be uh, informed. So we can also review um, if uh, what is uh, possible to, uh, the reason to be censured or not. So uh, I, I really don't recommend you to place such an item of a censure on the agenda by yourself because that wouldn't be in compliance with the censure policy approved by Bulk. I think what I'm suggesting is that we, we recommend a censure motion to be brought should an investigation determine that somebody was in violation. Charlie, I think it's a moot point. I think it's a moot point. There's going to be a censure motion brought to the board. I mean, I, I maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think it seems like a foregone uh, conclusion. I think uh, uh, Julian's point is, I, if I understood correctly, that we can't recommend a censure motion per se, but we certainly can mention the other part of it, which is an investigation and which is a predecessor to any censure actually happening. So I, I completely think that's one of the things that uh, that we need to uh, uh, to put to the general board. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, as to the timing of the censure motion, theoretical, whenever it's gonna come, well, it'll go 30 days and then the next board meeting, it goes on the agenda and there's no option there. Um, with that said, there are other possible things that we can do. Um, and one is something that we can't do, but it's something that can be done, which is grievance. Okay, our bylaws have it. Uh, the public can file a grievance. Uh, grievance all, does not remove a board, uh, a board member, um, but it's a complicated process. Five members of the public, uh, you know, get to, uh, uh, to do the fact finding and the determination of whether the grievance is valid. And there's a whole thing about the repercussions, but that's for the public to do. That may or may not happen. I have no idea. Um, it doesn't, it's not the pathway to removal though. And if people have in mind the potential for removal, that, that pathway starts with censure. Um, censure, I would also rem remind you, I read the wording earlier, it's on the bylaws. Censure is not, uh, it, the intention of censure, according to the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners, is to give a board member a chance to reform their, their, their actions. Uh, so that's what it says. I didn't write it. Nobody here wrote it. Uh, but that's what the what Bonk has given to us. And you and I think we need to bear that in mind. Um, but uh, but I don't think I think, again, it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen. And uh, can we clarify for a second the grievance process? Because the grievance process goes towards actions of the entirety of the board. Right. It does not go towards any individual. So anyone filing a grievance is going to say 22 people on the existing board did something wrong. They're not going to say one person out of that 22 did something wrong and maybe two or three others might have done something wrong. It's the entire 22. All right, let me reread the section for a second while you're while you're talking because I that wasn't how I read it before. What what exactly is the uh, <clears throat> how's the grievance pop, the grievance panel work? I think Julian would be a better person to answer that. Well, the, sorry, sorry, I, I was reading something else at the same time. So the, what, how, yeah. does the, how does the grievance panel work? Oh, so um, wait, wait, the, the grievance process is, uh, is a whole process too. So first, if there is uh, a board member, but more generally a stakeholder, they want to uh, file a grievance against the whole board, not against a board member or, or a certain board member. It's a grievance against the whole board. Uh, it has to go through the, the portal of the department. And then the department will check if um, 
if the, the grievance is receivable, so if we can satisfy the, the, this grievance. So if the grievance is against a board member for an action that he uh, took by himself, that's not, that's not receivable and there won't be any uh, follow-up to the grievance. It won't be certified and the, the, the process will end. So if the grievance is against the full board for uh, not respecting uh, their own bylaws or standing rules, uh, then we can certify the, um, uh, the grievance. If it is for um, a, a lack of respect or of a state or federal law, then it's another process. It's not, uh, it's not the grievance uh, process. So if the grievance is certified, then we will uh, send the grievance to your uh, board that will follow the grievance section of your bylaws. Um, and after a period of time, if your board didn't take action uh, on that grievance, the department will then uh, take the grievance back and gather um, a regional panel that will uh, address the issue. Thank, thank you, Julian. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. That was a correction. I, I stand corrected. I appreciate it. Um, so the, the final thing to consider is something Jessica brought up, and it has to do with the changes to committee's uh, paragraph, which states that the board, talking about the general board, uh, can establish, disband, or make changes as needed to any uh, standing or ad hoc committee. And it's done by a simple majority vote uh, of the uh, board members uh, present um, with a quorum. And any such action by the board is noted in the council meetings, et cetera. Um, so that's, that's the other thing for us to, uh, to talk about. It's another possibility. Um, and um, uh, the Jessica specifically brought up um, questions of committee leadership and also of the existence of the committee itself that the, uh, to consider disbanding uh, um, a committee. I think, I'm, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, Jessica. I think what you said, we well, you referred to the public safety committee. Yes, it, but also I think it's fine to talk about this in the next meeting agenda item, if you'd like. I was, right. gonna, I, I was, I was waiting for that actually, because I, okay. I, wanted, I wanted to chime in on that one. Um, I, I think the three of us at least have agreed that this item should be, that this item in, in theory should be written into the agenda regarding um, an investigation into the situation. And let me, um, let me, as a point of order, let me just mention we're after 8.30 uh, when the meeting was scheduled to end. I'd like to uh, uh, to do a quick motion to extend the meeting till uh, 9.30 right now. I agree. I'll, I'll, I would amend it till 10 because I don't think we have any chance to get out by 9.30. I was assuming at 9.30 we would do another motion. You might as well just say 10, Ken. We're just, you might as well gonna be 10 is so fine. We'll 10 is fine. Okay, why don't we... Uh, well, are we on the, that next agenda item? I think we are. I okay. Uh, the, I'm not sure. I think there's one other thing we need to cover on this item. Uh, okay. We have had a lot of input from the neighborhood and from the press as regards to what our positions are. I think one of the things that should be done is that someone should be drafting letters to go out as a press release and as a notification of any correspondence that the public has given to us. Well, and I think that that was the intention of the meeting that Martin has scheduled for tomorrow, but I agree with Charlie's concern. I doubt there'll be a quorum. I think it's, I, I, I can only tell you, I begged for that meeting to be scheduled immediately when this whole thing came up on Tuesday morning and I was hoping we'd have a Wednesday night meeting on it. I think it was urgent uh, and should have been scheduled at the earliest possible moment, which would have been Wednesday evening. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to happen on Friday. So with that said, um, you know, uh, Martin did attach to his meeting notice a, uh, a draft and somebody today read me an amend or a, a, an edited version of that draft that I thought was beautiful. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it, should that go as a motion before the board, it's problematic because it's in conflict to this meeting that's scheduled to tomorrow for tomorrow that may or may not happen. Um, 
And I, I think it's really problematic. And, and unfortunately, if it's going to go to our other meeting agenda. I think it's disrespectful to our stakeholders. Um, so uh, unfortunately. May I suggest that we make a motion to prepare a draft to present to the board at our next Thursday meeting if Martin's meeting does not present something or if the uh, meeting fails due to quorum. I think that waiting for that long is a massive problem. Bingo. And I think that at, that we should schedule it for, and I hate to say this, uh, Sunday or the latest on Monday. I don't think we should wait until um, until uh, Tuesday, uh, what's it called? Till, till next Thursday, because I happen to look at the crowd of people who are sitting here and I have received at least two phone calls from two reporters, including one who's sitting in this room at this very moment. And something tells me they're gonna want a statement and rightfully so, well before next Thursday's meeting. Um, with that being said, we are on the next, we're on the next topic or are we not on the next topic? We are, we are. And you have a point of order here, Crystal, that you are trying to, to, there's a, an excerpt from our bylaws that's, that is appropriate for this discussion. Can I just read it real quick? Please. Please do. It says that um, it's under the duties and powers of the bylaws, and it states that the board may, by official action, appoint official representatives to other public bodies with the authority to present a standing council position previously adopted by the board or a statement that the council has had insufficient time to develop a position or recommendation on a matter before that body. So maybe this instance would apply to that. Do we have, is there somebody such as maybe the outreach chair that the board um, has deemed like a, the official representative? Generally speaking, I would have guessed that person, I'm gonna hate to say this one, that person would have been the corresponding secretary <laughs> for which we do not have one at the moment. Um, so, <clears throat> um, in theory, in theory, yeah, the outreach committee chair would likely be the person, either that or I guess me, I mean, because I'm kind of filling that role at the moment. Um, but with that being said, I don't think we ever approved or appointed that person Bingo. to fill that role. And for that reason, because it's absolutely when, when I found out the first thing I went and looked at, because I thought about that same thing, I don't think we can make a statement. Um, at this juncture, despite that I want to, and I've been called by multiple reporters and asking me for a statement. And my response is now and always is, is while well, I would love to make a comment, the board cannot make a comment until it is approved. We have meetings today, we have a meeting tomorrow, we have a meeting next week, um, and hopefully we can officially make a statement. Um, well, tomorrow, if tomorrow's meeting was 10 minutes, I think we can make us, we can, we can get all done. The feeling that people are going to chime in tomorrow. It's going to be 10 minutes. I, I know. And for that reason, we are going to run long, even though it's only one type, an item. I don't know if we're going to record them. A point of order. In the theory that actions might speak louder than words and no statement might be needed, could we get to the other agenda items where you might be able to take action? And that could be a reporter's interest. Yeah, can we move on to, to the next item? I will agree with that. I think we've we, we, we've beaten this one to the most. Um, the next one's regarding review of public comment at the 9-8-2020 Public Safety Committee meeting regarding the possible involvement of one or more SOAR board members in the incident with the boulders. And if you have if you'd like to speak on that one, and I will try to be yes, Julian. I saw, no, I, saw I, I, I was just I was just saying goodbye. I have to go oh. to another meeting. Thank you for, for joining us this evening. We appreciate it. Um, with that being said, um, if anybody has a public comment on that individual topic um, and would like to make a public comment, please feel free to raise your hand and we will call on you. D don't raise your hand at once. Was, was anybody there? I mean, <laughs> No one's here. Oh, uh, um, somebody, somebody, somebody just sent me a message. To be clear, this is regarding the comments at the public safety meeting. Um, I guess that was on Tuesday, on Tuesday night. Um, regarding the possible involvement of one or more SORO board members in the incident with the boulders. Go ahead, Jess. Um, I will kick things off if no one else will. Um, 
So uh, as a former public safety committee member, um, given my experience with this committee, it is beyond saving and it needs to be disbanded or at least its current members somehow either removed or its composition changed. I say that based on a three strikes policy. The first two strikes and the reason I resigned was when this committee voted twice this year to endanger public safety. That was first by voting in the midst of a pandemic to demand that businesses reopen without restrictions that protect the public. And second, after hearing from members of our community who described being beaten and unlawfully detained by police, this committee voted to send a letter praising police. At that point, I resigned. I think the third strike is the committee having heard, I think about 60 members of the public expressing outrage about this Boulder situation and choosing to neither discuss it or take any action. The committee heard multiple members of the public demanding censure or removal of the individual. They heard the public accusing a member of this board of having participated. The committee then voted to elevate that member of the board to vice chair of the committee. I, I know there was speaking uh, amongst, I think Marge mentioned that some consideration has to be given to the appearance that we present to the public. And when something around 60 members of the public tell you that there is a problem and they identify a board member that they think caused that problem and then you promote that board member, that does not seem to me like a committee that's concerned about the safety of everyone. It seems to be a committee that's concerned about the safety of only some. I do not think this committee can discharge its duty to be concerned about public safety. You? So to, to be clear, you're suggesting a motion to disband the Public Safety Committee. Or to remove all current committee members since they voted unanimously to promote the board member who the public accused of having engaged in this. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, Re Sisterhood LA, if you could identify yourself and speak. Hi, my name is Mary Kenny. I am the executive director of Resisterhood LA. We do outreach to the unhoused population all throughout Los Angeles County. Um, I'm also commenting because I would uh, like to see this committee disbanded. The act that they participated in uh, was violent and the opposite of public safety. Um, public safety is for everyone and like it or not, unhoused people are constituents of your neighborhood. Um, they live there. Um, and according to your bylaws, you do, the committee chairs serve at the pleasure of the board so they can be removed in the same manner in which they were appointed. I don't see anything specifically about the disbanding of a committee or removal of committee members, but I do believe they should all be removed. This is not a, this is a toxic environment. It needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to, just to dwell on, on the bylaws, I'm just gonna read it. it essentially, um, we have the rights to make, um, all standing in, in ad hoc committee should be established by the board, including the board standing rules, suggested from committees may come from state stakeholders. Um, they all get voted on by the board. The um, committee, there's committee appointments, there's committee meetings, there's changes to committee. The board, the board may establish, disband, or make changes as needed to any standing or ad hoc committee by a simple majority of board members present. Any such action by the board shall be noted in the council meeting minutes and reflected in the standing rules. And, if, and then there's a clause about removing committee chairs. Um, that for anybody who's looking is in article seven, uh, letter section three. Um, so that's just a point of order. With that being said, um, Terry, your hand is raised, go ahead. Thank you, I just wanna make one comment. Uh, yes, there were 72 public comments made at the public safety meeting on Tuesday. The problem is, is that, uh, my fellow board member doesn't realize that that item was not on the agenda. So therefore we were not able to take action or do anything. Um, I have uh, been in contact with Mike Lynn and we would be having it on the next public safety agenda. Um, 
And that was the reason why we took no action, because it would have been a violation of the Brown Act. My concern is you took action. The committee unanimously voted. Ken, do you mind calling on people um, for the moment? I've got to take a business call. I, um, I don't okay, think I, 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 I believe Jared. Do that. Oh, um, you can just pick up people that their hands are raised if you see the list. Anyway, Jared, you're next. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, I want to clarify, I guess, a couple of things and throw my two cents in here for sure. Because one, I didn't know until yesterday. Uh, <laughs> when I looked it up myself, that apparently I'm still listed as being on public safety, even though I have never attended one of those committee meetings. I wanted to join that committee when I first joined the board, uh, whatever it is now, a year, year and a half ago. But uh, honestly, it's because of the kind of conversation that we're having today that I was uh, disinterested in really getting involved with what they're doing there. I've always found uh, ever since I've started to get involved that those uh, that particular committee didn't seem to have the right uh, intent to me, didn't seem to have their heart in the right place, and I didn't really want to be a part of it. So I wanted to clarify uh, for anyone who I guess is interested in that. I know that uh, I'm happy to still disband that committee. I'm not trying to say I <laughs> don't want to do that. But uh, no, I, I, I would be interested in being a part of a reformed version of that committee. That's for sure. Uh, I, I certainly like that idea. That was always uh, my intent. But Unfortunately, like I've said, that is why I have not ever actually attended. When in the, the first couple of monthly general board meetings, I kind of got a feel for how that committee was run and lost interest quite quickly. So I wanted to clarify that. Uh, and I look forward to certainly more of the investigation and more of the discussion there when uh, the rest of us board members can put our two cents in for folks who might be out representing the rest of us. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, um, and Charlie is not here, and I am not the host, so I don't have uh, any ability to call on Marge. Who I'm going to call on myself. Can oh, I good, you're unmuted. Me? Good. Look at me being clever, using buttons. Um, what is the intent of the person who wrote this agenda for review of public comment at the public safety meeting? I mean, what, what it was a three, four, and something hour meeting. <laughs> Since I, already, since I already admitted I wrote it, the intent was simply to get the facts out as to what was said at the meeting and to, based on those statements, to come to a determination as to how this executive committee wanted to go forward to the general board. Okay, well, it's a four, as you know, John, because you sat through it, it's like a four and a half hour meeting. So reviewing it in, the, in, in this setting, I mean... You know, well, if you all don't have access to the Zoom recording, some kind activist has already put it up on YouTube for anyone who wants to access it. So uh, you can use Twitter to find that link. But um, I, I, I guess, is this a, an, uh, um, an item on the agenda worth pursuing when really if the intent is to review four and a half hours of public comment, it feels well, like that would be better done somewhere else. Well, let's put it this way. I think over the last two agenda items, we've got a pretty clear idea as to what happened at that Monday meeting. Right. I, I would add one thing, though. I think there is a value in broad strokes, and I'm not a big fan of broad strokes always. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use them. It seems to me that, that the um, public comment that I heard, and I did not hear all of it, centered on several different categories. We had people who were for the boulders, we had people that were against the boulders. We had people who were um, uh, uh, blaming the board, and there were people who were thanking the board, and um, and that's and I'm also conflating not just the public comment but emails that we got. It seems to me that several of those things are problematic for us. Um, that public makes a comment for or against something that's that's public comment. I have no qualms with that. Um, what I'm concerned about um, is that uh, that there's a lot of there's been emails and there were comments that blame the board for having taken an action that the board didn't take. Uh, I think we we know enough facts that we know that there was a community of people that took that action. It was not this board. Uh, it was not the the general board. Now. 
if you want to point out that there may have been um, uh, individuals, that's fine. And we're addressing, we're trying to address that. I think we've been talking about that. But, um, but I, I'm concerned of both sides of that. I'm concerned about people f sending us letters of thanks for something that we didn't do. I don't think we want those letters of thanks. I think we need to correct those. I think we need to respond to those emails that we got. And I think we need to respond to the people um, who, who castigated us um, because neither of them is based on, on the board's actions itself. Now, again, it's, I think that's separate from dealing with, with the uh, actions of specific board members. And again, we beat that you know that that particular uh, subject uh, uh, quite a bit, and I think we're we're we made some movement on that. Um, so that's that's my answer. But you have something more you want to say? Well, I just would like to offer that um, you know there's a field, a whole field of people called you know in crisis management, right? Like there's a, something big happened. It came out of uh, nowhere for everyone except for 30 people in the community who seem to know about it. Um, and now the board is having to deal with it. There's a lot of um, incorrect information flying around and the way to correct that is by putting out good and clear information. So there, there has been a lot of activity, a lot of misinterpretation of who actually is a board member, who isn't a board member, whether a board member can speak for the board. It's a complicated process as any of you who are board members understand, like being on the board is complex, right? And understanding the procedure is complex. So that would, I would say, that would call for, you know, active putting out of, of um, you know, good information, um, clarification where someone has misinterpreted that uh, Peter essentially is a board member, although he isn't. Um, but I think it's just, um, I think it speaks to the fact that the, the function of this body is to create a bridge in the mission of a neighborhood council is to create a bridge between community and the city, right? And to, to um, make those two things kind of feel connected. And there's a lot of opportunity here for the board to, to be doing that work and in so doing sort of fix some of these misconceptions. But I, you know, I'm a bit of a junkie for this kind of boring meeting shit. And I have to say my head spins because, because we're talking about some really complex like procedural stuff rather than kind of actually trying to be clear about things. So I think we, I, I would suggest that board members in the, in the coming meetings about this, and there will be plenty, really are ve speak with great clarity. Who is, who isn't, what is, what isn't. Because it just is creating additional confusion in, in the community at large, in, which gets repeated sometimes in the press inaccurately and then it gets retweeted and you know so uh let's just bring some sort of calm clarity to language and use of language and let's show that the board should show action that is serious um rather than being too worried about um you know whether we should take praise or not take praise instead why not worry about clarifying the things that have been unclear Okay, Mar Marge. Just to to tell you, I th I think you've read my emails of the first more of the morning. I, I was at nine fifty two that morning that uh, I I made a recommendation that we take that that we move in that direction immediately, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, it wasn't my ability in terms of my board role to make that happen. I, I um, understand your it's problem. It's why then. it's why we put it on the executive committee meeting, and even yes. that you know, we, we talked to Julian about it because, you know, there's a whole question about how this committee meeting agenda can be set. And, you know, were we, were we doing it within the bounds and weren't we, and we, we, we came to the conclusion that we were, but this was, uh, we, we have limits. And, and that actually goes to why we had come to the point of, of, of the, one of the other agenda items from the non-special meeting and with great regret, regret, we got to the point where, yeah, we had a situation where crisis management was needed. We needed to react right away, and we didn't. And we're sitting here, and it's days later, and all we can do is talk literally from a procedural point of view about what do we want to put on an agenda that might not be till next week. I mean, it's 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 mind blowing. Uh, but that's where we are. I I I'm I can't disagree with a word that you said, Marge. Uh, anyway, um, so so again, what what I was leading to is something a little bit different at this point, and it goes to the crisis management. It seemed to me that we don't we don't simply need one uniform statement. I think that we need a an approved letter that we can send back to people who wrote to us. Uh, 
you know, of one camp and we need an approved letter we can send back to, to people of, of, of the other camp if there are only two camps. I haven't read every letter close enough to figure that out. Um, if there are three camps, then we might need three letters, but we need to, I think we owe our stakeholders the, the respect and, and the dignity of a response. And I think we should say it in a way that's factual and with clear language um, and, uh, you know, with respect. And um, uh, Jess, you have a comment, so I'm going to, uh, sure. yeah, go ahead. Just since we're reviewing the public safety comment, it's not a both sides thing. There were four or less public commenters in favor of the boulders. I lost count at 45 who were against. You, we as a board have all seen that that's about the percentage of emails we've gotten. This is not an issue the community is split on, at least as far as I can tell. And so I would like to return to the purpose John identified of this subject, which is, will the executive committee agendize an issue or a motion of disbanding or otherwise changing the composition of the public safety committee? You heard uniformly from public comment so far that that's supported. So we only have two people right now. We really need Charlie back to uh, uh, to, uh, to get to that. I, I'm in fairness, but let me uh, let me table that just for until Charlie comes back and uh, and keep moving. But but that's the uh, the question: um, is do we agendize a motion like that? Uh, is there any? Do, do we happen to have any volunteers for the drafting of uh, of such a motion? No? I think we might get a legal volunteer if we were saying you were willing to do it. I, I didn't hear one. I, I've heard the words. We, we, we know what words uh, are, are suggested. Um, anyway, I, I, I only ask it because I'm very, very limited in time these days. Can, uh, I, can I ask a question of Jess? And are those the only two remedies that would be satisfactory to you? Uh, and the reason I'm asking is... I view public safety as an all-encompassing committee that covers all spectrums of the, the issue. I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think you might have some very legitimate concerns about the leadership of the committee. So would there be a in-between ground where either the leadership could be suspended or removed and the committee continued, or is that not acceptable to you. I'd just like to clarify, this is not just me. Like I said, you heard unanimous public comment in favor. So it's not just about me. It is your choice as leaders, whether you think it would send the message that you would want to send to the 60 plus people who oppose this action. If the committee that then elevated to vice chair the person who the public was concerned and accused of engaging in this action, whether you think that is a committee that we should still keep or whether you have concerns and think it should be altered or disbanded. Honestly, if you think a committee, and I just wanna correct something about what Terrence said, an agenda item on there was crime alert discussion. The public identified a crime. I think we heard from Peter that he's apparently uh, discussing possible felony charges, the committee could have discussed a crime here, a crime identified by the public. It chose not to, and it chose to once again elevate someone who the public accused of participating in that. I also identified, like I said, other problems with the committee, Jared did too. If that's not enough for you to put it on an agenda and make a motion, what can I say? Okay, we, we have a few people with hands up. Uh, for public comment, and I don't have the ability to unmute people, but it looks like I do. Muted. I think okay. I'm unmuted. I've unmuted myself. Okay. Bela. Yes, Bela, go ahead. Um, a couple of things. One is that um, I, as a member of the Public Safety Committee, um, did not know that anyone specifically charged a specific member of the Public Safety Committee or the Soro Board at all. I did not hear that, number one. Number two is that those 50 or 60 people that were on the call, does it matter that most of them were not SORO NC stakeholders? Because that was advertised on this meeting, on our public safety meeting, 
was advertised on Instagram and on Twitter and just bringing out people who were saying things that the, the boulders were blocking the, the walkway and they weren't. That so meant that they never saw the boulders. There were people that were saying things that made, with the reality of what was set up and what they were saying, it, it proved to me in my mind that they were using talking points. They were not actually members of this community, nor did they see the incident. I'm done, thank you. Okay. Okay, and, uh, I see that Rihanna has uh, got her hand raised and Andrew will be next. But Rihanna, you're up next. If I've Hi, done- everyone. Yes, I had to step out for the last hour or so of this meeting, but I wanted to voice my support for disbanding the Public Safety Committee as Jess was speaking about. Um, even if putting the rocks there was not an official action of the Public Safety Committee, we have clear evidence that one or more members of that committee was involved in placing the rocks there. And that shows a deep misunderstanding of what public safety is when they're committing crimes to push neighbors out of their neighborhood. Um, and in response to Bela's iPad, how do you know whether or not most people at that last meeting were South Robertson stakeholders? Um, it sounds like you're just uh, considering stakeholders, homeowners in the area which we know many homeowners in the area are supportive of um, taking action against those who were involved in placing those boulders there. And you have no right to gatekeep stakeholdership just to homeowners. That's how we got into this mess in the first place. So those accusations are completely off base. Okay, thank you, Rihanna. Andrew, you're next. I'm gonna unmute you, go ahead. Yeah, I'm actually with uh, Bela's iPad on this because I did research. There are even this meeting, in this meeting, there is like a, a promotion in Twitter to join this meeting. And I don't think, I think like this meeting is starting to be biased. And I think like we should get into like the point instead of politiz uh, politicizing this. And just as a, 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 as a probably the member of the board over there should be like neutral on this like i i feel like you know again like a lot of finger pointing here and uh, let's think about the solution and it's not like about this bending and like we, we can make a better solution to this why can't we think about like something greater than this like like we learn from this problem and like let's move on like seriously like it's, it sounds like a high school again so that's my point thank you andrew uh Next up is Holly Craig Worley. I'm gonna unmute you in a second. Okay, go ahead, Holly. Hi, thank you. I wanted to speak in support of either disbanding the committee as a whole or strongly uh, kind of restarting the committee and all of its members. I feel that it is not serving its purpose as it is currently constituted and only dramatic, drastic action will really uh, address those issues. And I do want to address uh, Bela's iPad um, in saying that I counted several people, several of the over 70 commenters at that meeting on Tuesday night who did count themselves as several stakeholders, myself included, um, speaking against that action. And I, I consider it very problematic to start inspecting somebody's stakeholdership um, in these meetings. It just will not be productive. Okay. Thank you, Holly. Next up is Andrea Moore. I'll read this you in a minute. Okay, go ahead, Andrea. Andrea? One more time for Andrea. Okay. Sorry, Next I had my uh, earbud in. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Hi, yeah, so um, I'd like to ask, this is a not a rhetorical question, um, how many uh, residents of the South Robertson neighborhood who um, are unhoused, how many of those folks did y'all talk to? Um, because there's none of them on this call right now. Uh, we know that most unhoused people do have cell phones. Um, and we know that most people in Los Angeles who are living outside have lived in this city for at least 10 years. We also know from research from the University of Southern California 
that it is literally cheaper, it's more economically sound to house these people than to cycle them through um, criminalization, to cycle them through incarceration. Um, so I'm wondering why you guys uh, who vote for centrists, who only care about economic arguments, are wasting your money on a GoFundMe when your dollars would be more productive, more effective, and more humane housing these folks, providing them with mental uh, health services, providing them with housing services. We also know that living outside exacerbates mental illness. I understand that several of the community members are concerned about folks living outside who are mentally ill. So my question for you is, why are you moving this problem to another neighborhood by placing these boulders? Why do you want other neighbors to experience this incident that you had and why wouldn't you work with your community and use your position of power and use your position as middle class, upper middle class and wealthy Angelinos to make this city better and safer for everyone. Um, I would really encourage you guys to have a conversation with an uh, unhoused person, their people, okay? When you, Peter, Peter, you're literally not listening. You're talking, I can hear you. You don't care about anyone except wealthy folks. And this is like extremely disrespectful and exactly why everyone is blowing you up online because you don't care. And then you like imitate us and mimic us when we call you out on your hateful behavior. And like you guys call yourself Democrats, you say you're opposed to Trump and then you guys implement the same exact hateful policy that the right has been implementing against our most marginalized communities for decades. You should be ashamed of yourself. I yield my time, fuck you. Next, next up is Gloria Diem. Yes, I agree there is a fundamental issue with this committee. It's not based on one situation. It seems to be a trend. And so I am not sure what the right answer is, but we definitely need to take a second look at this committee, the leadership of the commu uh, committee, and ensure that they adequately reflect the wishes of the community. Thanks. Thank you, Gloria. Ken? What, me? I don't have my hand up. Oh, I know. I, I just was going to make a comment. I yeah, have heard from a bunch of these speakers, three of which at least are current board members, who uh, have basically said they have concerns about the makeup of the committee. From my perspective, we can continue having this conversation till either Charlie gets off the phone or till we all go old gracefully. But I, for one, am willing to move this forward to the board with a recommendation that they consider it. I I, I would second that motion and uh, and I would point out that that ship has sailed about aging gracefully, at least for two of us, you and I. Um, yeah, I, I we we don't have Charlie here. We've got a two out of three vote. I have no qualms with uh, with moving that. I, just, that to the I board. just got back, oh. but I will so, abstain. Sorry, my, I'm calling, I got overseas phone calls to take. That's my issue right now. Okay. That's okay. I'm sorry to hear that my brilliant logic didn't sway you, Charlie. I'm just going to abstain because I didn't hear the Fair majority enough. of the argument. The question is, oh, I'm sorry. Did you hear the question? The motion. The question is this. Should we move to the board a motion? Should we move to, uh, to the board a, a motion to either disband or to uh, uh I don't know what the right word is, but to remove all the members of the uh, public safety uh, committee. I would Reform. probably, I, I would Reform probably include the word you're looking for. I probably include a third option to remove the chair and or vice chair as a part uh, of that. Um, only because that was, that was suggested and that did not seem to be. I, I only no no what I, what I mean by that is not not as it as a singular motion. What I mean is as three options. I. This main argument, I, I was listening in on some of the, the discussion, um, despite my call. Um, but disbanding, um, removal of all members. But I think that if I, those two fail, we may still want to consider the other one of removing chairs and vice chairs and the like. And for that reason, I would probably want to include it. Um, 
I just, as a I point just... of decency, I'd be very hesitant to to do a motion like that while uh, the chair is lying on a hospital bed, having just donated a kidney. Uh, I think Fair it point. would be very bad form. Uh, I mean, I didn't, you know, disagreeing. Sorry, I, thought, I thought he was back, but okay. I, I don't know. The yourself. surgery was yesterday morning. Got it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we we actually took a two to three vote to uh, to put them to suggest a motion to the agenda for the board. I have a very big problem with the question of the whole agenda, because, again, I, I think we're now looking at two meetings that are unmanageable. Uh, the Friday meeting, I, as I've said, I have very grave doubts as to whether it's even going to take place uh, because I don't know that we'll have a quorum. And uh, um, Ken, Ken. Yeah, I know that's on the agenda. On the other agenda, don't do it yet. We'll I know, there. but the question is how imminent. How this is a a a a, a question of timing. Do you know, from, from this month or this meeting. I can't see us not. Okay. I, I, I disagree, think, but uh, I think but, the issue is different, guys. I think if you look at the agenda for the Friday meeting, the only thing on there is consideration of the motion, which is a non-starter for the actions that we're being asked to take. Right. I, I still don't think it's going to last less than a couple of hours, but we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Um. And, and again, as you know, I uh, strongly felt that it should be done Wednesday night. Uh, and do, you, by the way, do you have any objections to our agendizing for a Sunday evening meeting in case the meeting on Friday is either non-productive or non-existent? Uh, can we elevate my kids as proxies uh, to uh, attend for me? Uh, it's date night. Uh, I, uh, oh, only yeah, no, I, 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 Sunday evening's fine. I, I'm, I'm being and only if you have your kids run for the zone 10 thing, can you elevate your kids as a budget? Uh, yeah, as yeah, an not, not going to happen. They're not old enough. Let's, uh, let's keep, yeah, I have no qualms with suggesting a, uh, a Sunday evening meeting. Okay. It's 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 not up to me to schedule that meeting. It's not up to any of us. The, the you know, uh, as unless unless a majority of board members uh, call for scheduling of it, and I can't personally do that. Okay, I think we should move on. What's our next agenda item here? I think that does it for the special agenda. Right. So let's go on to the uh, the re the non special with, agenda with that without are we, are we calling this meeting adjourn the special meeting adjourned yes. without objection okay all right um can, if it's well, go ahead can you I, yeah yeah let's I'm sorry comment, I, you want you want to handle number three um that's your motion to remove Yes. So that's, that's it. There's a, uh, do we, do we send to the general board a motion to remove, uh, the president from his role as president? Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm the one who's been talking to him the most. Uh, I think everybody should know. Okay, hold on, hold on one second for, I'm going to, just so you all know, I'm going to lower all hands. Um, if you want to speak on this topic, I'm going to, you can just raise your hand again. I am not trying to stop anybody. I'm just lowering hands. So that you now, if you want to speak, just re-raise your hand. You can speak on this topic. Okay. Um, go ahead, Ken. So let me just give the background of it. Yeah, uh, this has been going on since about a month after um, after Martin took over the, the president's role. Um, it became very clear that the from the very first meeting, he was, needed some help and he was having trouble controlling uh, the first uh, meeting or two that we had. Um, there were offers to help him from all the members of this this executive committee, uh, and and I don't know, but I suspect from others. Uh, I know about what this executive committee did. Um, there were, um, at least in my case, I tried to give him ideas uh, of what things that needed to be done or reminders of things that needed to be done. I, I don't want to go through tons of examples, but I'll give one quick one that I think John and Charlie, you both know about. I don't know if you saw those emails uh, and you certainly didn't see uh, text messages, but after our June meeting, 
uh, at which I had made the mention that uh, David Menkes had, had resigned uh, and I made that publicly and we had a ton of people in the room. Uh, two people from, who were in the room applied for that position. But even before either of them applied, I started to be in touch with our president, with Martin, and asked him to please get the website uh, updated. Please publicize this open, um, this open seat in a way further than the mere announcement which had been met, made publicly. Um, and, uh, and it wasn't done. I actually have a text from Martin promising me it would be done on July 1st. It was not done. It went on and on. We had two legitimate applications. According to our bylaws, they should have been on the agenda. And we discussed this at executive committee openly. And we said, this is, a, this is terrible. We, we didn't put it on the website yet. And yet we have two legitimate applications, people who were in the room. And it's got to be on the agenda because the bylaws say it. But maybe we should immediately move to table it till the next month. And we talked about that. And it and, it's, and that's not what happened in the July agenda. That was not handled that way. It was not handled properly. Finally, we had more delays and more trouble and more miscommunication. And, and we had the August meeting, which didn't go well. Um, and you know now we're looking at, we have three more openings. We have what, 26 applicants? Uh, or something like that. Maybe one or two aren't qualified. Maybe there's 24 applicants. I'm there, are 20, I'm there, are, there are 26 applicants. Um, there is one who I believe is ineligible, and I have verified the two remaining ones who are potentially ineligible for their rules. I have, I have been provided one who promised me to get me documents tomorrow, and the other one who gave me uh, documents today, um, proving their eligibility. So we have currently 26 20, I'm sorry, 25 um, applicants. So, so with that happening weeks ago, I suggested that we needed a plan for dealing with it and no plan was forthcoming. And I suggested it over and over again. And during that process, spoke to Martin directly and said, Martin, you're my friend. I, I, I you know, I, but, but you're not getting this handled. Please resign, do it. Uh, you know, do it in a, you know, in a, in a respectable way, resign from the role, stay on the board, but you're not getting this stuff handled. It was a personal uh, outreach to him. I wrote it to him several times in emails. Um, and the executive committee was copied on, on some of these emails and uh, he did not. And I think, and I told him, if you don't resign at this point from all the discussions and all the complaints that I'm hearing, uh, was going to be a motion to remove. So it seems to me a pretty cut and dry thing that uh, we're not deciding to remove him tonight. Uh, but should it be advanced to the general board? I don't, to me, it's a foregone conclusion that we need to advance it to the general board. Um, so that's, okay. that's the motion. Let's take, let's take public comment on the topic. Uh, Gloria, your hand is raised. Yes, I have a process question. And earlier, as we were talking about the situation with the boulder, I heard some discussion around in situations where we have to remove a person from the board, we have to go through several steps of maybe censoring these people before we remove them. So in this particular situation, why would we jump to removing him if it's really warranted and not censor him. It's a, it's a, it's a question that it, it dawns a little bit on the topic that I think Jess pre presented earlier, which is um, chairs serve at the, and part of Jess, you didn't say this, I apologize. I thought it was you. Um, but then if it wasn't you, then it was somebody else. We, we were talking about public safety. Chairs serve at the pleasure of, essentially at the pleasure of the board. Um, he, the issue of removal in terms of that issue is removal from the board. There is a process for that. As in terms of the removal of a president to step down from his role, he's essentially a committee chair. Um, and as such, the board itself could vote to remove him as a committee chair and then appoint a new committee chair who would opt in this case would be the president of our, of our board. Um, so it would not be removal 
take censure and, and, and the like. Um, but you do not, you would not need censure to remove somebody from the rule of say a committee, which is exactly what this is being presented. Right. If I, if I can add to that just a little bit, Gloria, um, uh, what what we're suggesting, we're not talking about removing Martin from the board. Nobody wants him to be removed. Nobody suggested that. I haven't suggested that. Um, and 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 there is no uh, um, route for removal of somebody from the executive position that goes through censure. This is not about censure. Um, this is about um, uh, his position simply as president. And what the bylaws state, and again, I don't have it right in front of me, my papers are scattered at this point. Um, what, what the bylaws state is that the same way we elect um, a president by a majority vote of the board, that's the same way that we can remove somebody from the role. I would not in any way personally support removing him from the board per se, only from that role. Uh, he's a great guy. He contributes a tremendous amount to this board. He has wonderful energy, but I think in this particular role, I, um, I, I feel like uh, his his lack of of uh, um, go to the to the problems like what we saw a few days ago. His his lack of response on certain things has hurt us. I think his lack of leadership has hurt us. Um, and, and that concerns me. And he's a great guy. It's just not the right role for him is how I personally see it. With that said, that'll be argued in front of the board. The board can decide. Maybe people will feel the way I feel. Maybe they won't. I have no idea. Uh, my the question tonight is, do we put that motion in front of the general board? And I would, um, anyway, that's what we're here to discuss. Well, thank you for explaining the process issue. Um, given that, I think that Martin is still new in the role and we should give him an opportunity. And I think it's simply too early to attempt to remove him as president. So that's my opinion. I disagree. Um, Martha, you are, your hand is raised. Yes, hello. Um, I just wanted to echo Gloria's point um, that it's very strange to me that we are talking about removing someone from their positions of power simply for maybe not being responsive enough. Meanwhile, there have not been any concrete consequences discussed for anyone who was involved in the illegal dumping of these boulders, which seems like a much more severe infraction to me. Thank you. May I ask that her logo be removed? It's kind of against our code of conduct. I do not think you can do that, Barry. You would be silencing a member of the public. Oh, okay. I Sorry. Um, Crystal, you're up next. I just wanted to say that I, I do support bringing this motion before the board. Um, I think it deserves a, a broader discussion um, and input from the full board since it affects everybody. Um, of course, if the full board doesn't agree with the motion, they won't you know, they'll deny it. So um, I think this, you know, these times we deserve a president who is responsive. I mean, the bare minimum of the job is to get agenda posted on time, right? And um, I would hope that we would have a leader that can do much more than just that. Marge, you're up. Uh, hey. Um, so uh, just that language, Char uh, Ken, since you're asking officers, chairs and liaisons are appointed by simple majority vote by the board members present, they serve at the pleasure of the board and may be removed in the same manner in which they were appointed. So right. it is, Thank it's you. just a simple vote yeah. of the board. It, it's just for the officer position. It's not for their seat as a board member. Exactly. Um, I think leadership is really vitally important. I think good leadership flows downwards. And I think that... Um, one of the things that I'm going through uh, on the outside now of this board, but a board that my husband ran for 12 years and I, you know, um, chaired outreach for the same amount of time. And, you know, I, I, uh, if you indulge me for a second, when we joined the board in 2007, the board had fallen out of quorum because it had been poorly led. 
right? And they literally weren't enough board members in order to have a board meeting. And so a hand, they called a special meeting in which a bunch of us were elected simply to be able to have quorum, to be able to make this go on. In the space of time from 2007, through, my, through Doug's leadership and indeed through Crystal's leadership to follow, this board became an example in, within the context of the city as a leading neighborhood council, right? It is troubling to me the amount of dis, like it, there's a lot of sloppiness from the outside now looking in. I have attended a couple of these meetings and literally I hold my head in my hands because I feel like it's so, I understand Zoom makes it a bit more difficult, but it is really run with such a lack of, not just sort of organization and command, um, but also with the voice of leadership at the public safety meeting the other night, uh, this was a crisis, right? A thing had happened. We had a whole bunch of stakeholders. By the way, I don't know if Bela is still here, but uh, there is a definition for stakeholder and it, it includes anyone who defines themselves as a stakeholder in the community. So we really shouldn't be stakeholder policing. That was done for years uh, at the neighbor council level. Um, so leadership does matter. Gloria, I agree that he uh, maybe hasn't been a board chair for a long time, but he has been a board member for a very, very long time. And if you are a board member, you understand after, I don't know how long Martin's been on the board, but you understand process. So at this moment, where currently there's a, a conversation about censure and, and um, you know, um, reprimand against the board member, there's a motion that's just been uh, voted on to go forward about disbanding the Public Safety Committee, one of the core committees, there is a lot of intense external scrutiny of this board. Um, thanks to good people who are holding us accountable as they rightly should. Um, you know, it matters, leadership matters. And if there is somebody else among the current board members who is able to step into that role and help write this ship and write a sense of public perception and get things on track in a way that the work that everyone commits their volunteer time to do can be done as efficiently as is humanly possible within the context of a neighborhood council, you know, I really would consider that seriously. It's not a personal thing against Martin. I also find Martin a fun guy, but like this fun guy is not like the re requisite for the job requirement, right? Matt being able to manage the information, make run, make the trains run on time, right? Be able to step up in a position of leadership when there's a crisis in the community, such as the one we've had this week, being able to speak with a, a voice of authority, to be able to take action, to know the laws inside and out so that you can take that action correctly. All of these are aspects of leadership that I feel are lacking. And I feel it's not a personal thing for Martin. It's in um, out of a, a respect for the institution of this neighborhood council, which unfortunately from the outside looking in feels like it's kind of falling apart at the seams in a very public way right now. Um, and I know a lot of people have poured, you know, decades of their life. Some of you have poured decades of your life into this board and, and everybody deserves better, including the community that uh, you all are elected to serve and represent, which includes me. So um, I would, I would urge you to take this to the board where it can be discussed in, a, in an open way. It's an uncomfortable conversation. These things are always uncomfortable, but um, you know, your, your jobs is to act in the best interests of the board and its ability to serve the community. Thanks, March. Um, Jess, you're up. Uh, I think I'd like to echo a couple of public comments here. I can speak to my personal experience. Um, Martin has at least agendized motions I've sent him and when he's made mistakes, he's corrected them. I have not had that experience with the public safety committee as I think the executive committee is aware. The chair of the public safety committee did not put on the agenda an item that he, when I finally through public comment urged to be put on the agenda, did not support. I have not had that experience with Martin and I find it troubling that something that seems far more of concern to the public, given that we have, at this point, I think two articles, probably forthcoming news stories about a possible alleged crime would not be dealt with as swiftly as someone that the executive committee, once again, speaking as an outsider, has struggled with. I do not see this as a way to proportionally respond to what is truly important to at least the public comments we've gotten. It seems like you should prioritize the things that 
we've gotten incredible public scrutiny and comment on, and perhaps uh, sometimes, I guess, by the fact that I'm open to disbanding the Public Safety Committee, sometimes if an institution cannot function well, it should not function. I would really like to know who would be president if not Martin. If it's going to be a Public Safety Committee member, wouldn't we all want to know? Um, so Jamie, Jamie, hold on, Jamie, you're up. Hello, uh, my name is Jamie Penn. Uh, I'm a resident representative for the Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council, Subdistrict 3. Um, I'm familiar with the situation um, and I, I've been kind of watching along, um, just shocked at the response. Um, honestly, to me, this, this seems very much like a distraction uh, from the obvious point at hand. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why this procedure is taking place when uh, this emergency meeting has been called to deal with something that has gained a lot of attention. Um, you, you've had a member um, that you've had on camera, uh, a committee member, I'm not sure, mocking members of the public while they're speaking. This, is, this has been absolutely just a peculiar meeting, just to let you know from an outside perspective. Um, and it, I would just urge you to get back to the, the point at hand because the, the, what seems to be maybe a power grab at the moment uh, is, 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 it's a distraction. And uh, I would just uh, hope that, that you, as a suggestion that you would, you would get back to the point at hand that the public is uh, urging you to take precedent on. Thank you. J Jamie, to be, to be clear, um, this meeting was called for on Monday. The issue of the boulders for, we, for which we were addressing um, didn't come up until after that point, which is why we called a special meeting for that issue. So this was already pending. This issue has been discussed at length um, beforehand, <laughs> which is why this is even on the agenda now, as opposed to the other issue. Um, just to be, as a point of clarification, I don't see any other public comments um, nobody else has their hand rate. Oh, Crystal, your hand's up. Go ahead. One more thing. Um, I just want to clarify, maybe if all board members can just like add Silro and see after their name, because I think some of the things that are being attributed to board members were happening by non-board members. Um, um I, I will, I, I can, I can, I can rename everybody who's a board member. Um, I just want to be super transparent about who is a board member in this meeting and who is not. So I, I just don't want um, actions by some to be representative of, of our board. Um, those I also want to just uh, touch on the fact that this is kind of an unfortunate um, convergence of, of um, topics of discussion today. Um, unfortunately, this uh, president issue has, is ongoing. Um, it's kind of a, I mentioned before, called it before, a slow moving train wreck. Um, and it just so happens that it's, you know, the discussion is occurring on the same day we're talking about these other items too. Um, so I, it's not in my mind as a distraction. It's just, you know, this is something that I think if we had better leadership, I think there would be room for better responses as a board, you know, more timely responses as a board to these issues that are going on in our community. Um, so I think that we shouldn't put off the one to deal with the other. I think it, you know, it, this needs to be dealt with with the same um, speed and fierceness that we deal with the other issues too. Thank you. Um, all right, that, is the, that will conclude the public comment period. Um, I've held my tongue thus far. Um, I, it's not, this is not a question of whether, um, Martin is or is not a good president. It's a question of whether or not this issue should be on the agenda, right? We, there have been countless points made regarding um, leadership, whether that involves the uh, slow, the, the late posted agendas and the regular special meetings that we have had over the last six months, which seems to be a regular occurrence. Um, the bylaws arguments that come up on a monthly basis because something wasn't posted on time or motions are not posted or so on um, in a timely fashion. Um, 
the fact that we're having a meeting scheduled for tomorrow at five o'clock in the afternoon when um, at least four members of our board right now are Orthodox Jews and are going to be incredibly difficult. It's going to be incredibly difficult to be at that meeting or for others who've said that is a work time, they're not quite off work yet, that's gonna be also just as timely. I understand that um, meetings, you know, it's that he was unavailable, but that's what we have, that's why we have an executive committee. Um, personally, the fact that um, we had discussed the issues that are coming up later in this agenda about how to address the massive um, election vote um, and that it was being addressed by both me and and Linda, um, and yet I got an e you know, email went out to all candidates that was neither authorized nor served any purpose. Um, just seems like it, somebody's on their own at this point. And as Marge clearly pointed out, it's, it's like, I mean, essentially it's a unit, right? Like the, the, the everything runs downhill and as a result, um, I think that we sh there's no reason not to put this on the agenda. If the board doesn't think that after presenting the discussion that, that it's, uh, it's right, um, then they vote it down. But if you go back and you look, and, you, and I can go back and pull the votes when he was originally elected, those people who had previously um, worked with Martin did not support his um, vote. And, and I think that some of the fears that were in place then um, are, are coming to, for many of us, is our fruition now. So. For that reason, I think it should be on the agenda, um, and let the let the board decide whether or not it should go forward. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'd like to weigh in a little bit. I've been on this board in excess of fifteen years uh, over a two-year, a two-period stint. Within the last couple of weeks. We have had two of the most traumatic events that has ever happened in the history of this board. First of all, we have an election forthcoming next week, which well over 20 people are running for one seat. Uh, there has been persistent requests of the executive committee and others to get some clarification and get some ground rules so that it's a fair race for everyone. And it just hasn't happened. The president has been unwilling to address the issue. It's like right. talking to a blank wall. Can I interrupt you for just for one point so that people understand? Those requests by the executive committee began on August 27th. It was the earliest one I could find. But they've been ongoing for weeks. And the events of uh, Monday with regards to the boulder issue at the uh, Cataragus overpass. That is perhaps one of two or three traumatic events that have been the worst event that has been befallen any neighborhood council in the complete history of neighborhood councils. Uh, what has been the role of the president in that? Has he been involved in any fact finding? Has he been involved in any leadership? He has completely done nothing. He has consulted with no one. And called a meeting that essentially has got questionable chances of beating quorum and has a proposed motion to uh, come up with some nice sounding words that has literally no effect. It's a nice publicity piece. It's a puff piece, but it doesn't do anything. Now, as I said, I've been on this board for over 15 years. I've got at least a decade in it as have others. This is not the board I signed up for. The board I signed up for would have addressed this problem face on Monday and would have had meetings and had activity going on to resolve it by no later than Tuesday. Now, I say that not with any glee, but to indicate that there has just been an absence of involvement or recognition that, hey, this is a big thing that's coming up. I'd better pay attention to it. That just has not happened. And Martin is a nice guy. He is extremely dedicated. But he has proven 
that the job is bigger than he is. So for those reasons, I'm willing to undergo the humiliation we're going to face as a board in having to discuss this, the humiliation Martin, I think, is going to face in having to defend his actions. But I am guessing that if we don't address it now, within the next six months, there is going to be a vast exodus of board members who are going to be running for the hills. And I would rather have a function that has a little bit of embarrassment than a non-functioning board that is non-existent. So for those reasons, I'm suggesting that we need to place it before the board and let them make a decision. Um, we, we have three hands that have been, that have raised since. Uh, just to be clear, the public comment period on this one is over. Um, not that I don't want to hear your opinions because I, I am kind of curious, um, but I think the three of us agree that this should be an item on the agenda. And I really, I think we really need to get to the next item um, because I have a lot of thoughts that I've done with regard to the appointment of these seats. And I think that's a far more pressing issue because it's gonna take a lot of time if we don't cover it. Great. So, yeah. Um, so let, I'm gonna start, let me lay out my proposal on how we handle the three open seats. There are no standing on this issue. Um, Essentially, right now, there are, I'm pulling up my list here. Like I said before, there's, there's 25 people. Now, there are, there's currently one person running for zone nine. That should be a very quick election, right? One, they can speak for half a minute and be done. There are three people running for zone 10, um, who I'm presuming are also running for at-large seats if they don't win the, the zone 10 seat. Um, with the, And then there are 20-something on the other one. So let me ask. At first, let me address the issue of the zone 10, because that's a pretty simple process. If the person, if not, if no person earns 50% of the vote, according to our bylaws, they don't get elected, there would be a second runoff. Um, that would be two people, and the remaining two people with the highest, the highest vote getters would then be in the runoff. That's simple because there's only three of them. The far more complicated issue comes up with respect to the at-large position. I don't want to have 25 elections in a row. I've heard, uh, I had a call earlier with John and Julian about best practices. So first thing we're going to do is have a motion at the very beginning about the passage of standing rules um, that I can put together for the purpose of this one, right? Amendments to our standing rules. Um, the first vote, anybody who does not earn a vote, here's, here's my recommendation. Um, and I'm happy to hear thoughts um, if you do not get a vote in the first election, you are then removed from a second election. Um, in the second election, um, the top three vote getters can then, it would then, assuming that nobody gets half, once somebody gets half, it doesn't matter because then you get half, it's over. Um, I don't want to do the version where you just eliminate the bottom person because I think that will take 14 votes and that's going to be painful. Um, so I would say if anybody gets zero, um, they're eliminated and we have a secondary vote, the top three on, um, if then at that point, the three vote, if we don't have 50% then two move on, it would max out our vote. I recognize that kind of a lot, but at the same time with this many people running, I don't see a much better option, at least that, that, that I've come up with in order to eliminate you know, 12 votes. Um, I'm happy to hear public comment on my thoughts. Um, I'm happy to consider other versions, but that is what I have essentially come up with as the best okay. as of now scenario. Charlie, let me let me just clarify something, and sure. uh, so that every anybody who's going to make comment knows this. We have a procedure in the bylaws when there is a vote like this. If there is um, if there is no majority winner, then the bylaws say you take the two people with the highest vote count and you elevate them to a second uh, a vote and then whoever wins wins if it's a tie then you do a toin cost a, 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 you know a, 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 a I said that exactly wrong coin flip. Uh, coin, flip. Uh, coin, coin flip coin flip coin flip so uh, 
I think what you're saying, and I don't know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, what you seem to be saying, because you probably studied game theory, is that there's a middle potential, which is what happens if you don't have two people who are the, the, the top two vote getters in the first round. What if you have, you know, uh, one person gets two votes and everyone else gets one vote, right? Then how do you do it? So I think you're addressing the middle ground. I don't think we need to address the two extremes where you do have a two, two clear winners. That's our, in our bylaws and that's approved by Dunn. And I think that's a, I don't know the origin of that, but I think it came from Bonk originally. So am I right that that's the middle ground that you're talking about? I'm trying to address the fact there's a lot of people and I have a feeling that we're gonna have a lot of threes, fours. And I think it's a bit unfair if two people get four votes and three people get three votes and everybody else gets zero or one that only the, four, the two fours, that's eight people of the, that's not, even, that's not even a quorum voting for those two people. And that is my inherent fear that a fair, I'm trying to make it as fair as possible. Um, so with that being said, I think we should take public comment and see, we can have a discussion after public's made, but I think that's where we are. Um, Dan, your hand is up. You can go first. You're muted. You gotta unmute yourself. That there was our first previous motion. Sorry about okay. that. No problem. Not a problem. Um, all right, Jess, it's all yours. I don't hear you. I think you're muted, Jess. No, no you're not. We're not hearing you. It doesn't say. <laughs> now we're going to hear it. Okay. All right. There you go. I'll profoundly disappoint my partner with having to listen to this scintillating conversation. Um, <laughs> so first of all, thank you so much, Charlie, for putting in the time and effort to make <laughs> I only ask and at the risk of us of uh, being an experimental democracy, would it be helpful in reducing the number of votes to make the second round a ranked choice voting? I, I thought about that, that concept. Um, I, I fear, you know, if we were sitting in a room where I could watch everybody's ranked choices down, it, it becomes that that's a simpler process. I like that idea. Um, I, I fear that sitting here with me trying to take notes via Zoom, that becomes a bit of a complicated process. Um, with that being said, like, could we do a one, two, three, and you pick, you pick your top three and anybody, you know, in theory, you could do anybody who gets a vote on the first round goes to the second round, right? That way you just want like zeros and then that way we can get through and see where we stand. Um, how, how do you propose we make the ranked choice voting work? I mean, you have a proposal on how that would work? Well, um, I also would be open and welcome everyone's thoughts to the first round requiring at least two people's votes. Maybe that would narrow it more quickly. Um, and, uh, I am so grateful that you are the one who navigates the Zoom, but I wonder if we did, um, yes, uh, literally a top, maybe a top four, I don't know, uh, but ranked choice voting at the second round might, might allow us to do only two votes, <laughs> that being the goal, perhaps. You know, when you say it, maybe anybody who does not get two votes would not advance to a second round, and then we cut them down to four, on, and then from there to to two. I, you know, two, or potentially one if you get a majority. Maybe I think about that. I got I got to run through details, and I'll let Tommy. Your hand is up. So why don't you speak? And maybe gives me a little more time to think about it. Uh, yeah, I just feel like uh, you're making this really complicated. Sorry. Uh, it's actually really simple. There are voting methods used all over the world that allow you to do uh, uh, multi-candidate votes like this in a single round. Um, rank choice is one of them. You, it's created so that you can do it within a single round and you don't have to do runoffs. Uh, the simplest one is called approval voting. It's where you simply give a yes or no on every candidate. 
you can vote as many times as you like. Uh, if there are five candidates, I can vote yes on three and no on two. And then at the end of it, the candidate with the most number of votes wins. It's a frequency count. So very simple. So um, Tommy, let, let me let me wait. Hold oh, on, John. To ask you a question here, Tommy. Um, if we were in a room, that's not. I, it's not. A, I don't have. A, I get, I understand that concept. Our meetings are run via Zoom, and every meeting has to be a voice vote and a recorded voice vote at that. 